hearings on notice of intent, request for determinations of applicability. The commission will also be voting on decisions in taking up other business. No hearing times have been assigned to the specific agenda items and the commission will take them up in the order they are listed. Discussion and action items may be taken up at any time. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting online. The commission welcomes participation in the meeting by the applicants and general public. Attending the meeting tonight are six conservation commission members, Margaret Wheeler, Jim Gazzo, Ann Jeffries, Marilyn Frank, Noel Donovan, and Eric Foley, the conservation resource planner and the assistant planner. This meeting is being recorded by the Westford Cable Access Television. We respectfully ask that anyone mute their computer microphones and phones when they are not in use to avoid unnecessary noise during the meeting. This is an open meeting, so for all the panelists who have access to the chat panel, please only use chat for technical issues related to the video conferencing. The commission will proceed by opening the agenda items, having the applicant or the representative present the project, or if previously opened in a public meeting, they will will provide a brief summary of the project. The commission and its staff will follow the questions, follow with questions, and then we will open it up to the public for questions and comments. Uh, at this point, if you wish to participate, you will raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted for you to participate. Due to the limitations of the platform, attendees that are accessing the meeting via the telephone number at the top of the agenda will only be able to listen to the proceedings and will not be able to contribute. Please access the video conference link uh, via the link on the agenda, even if you do not have a webcam to participate. Um, I'm now going to take a roll call vote. Um, Marilyn? Yes. Present? Yes. Jim? I'm here. Ann? Present. Margaret? Present. Noel? Present. I'm present as well, so we're all present. So we're going to move on to our first agenda item of the evening, which is an uh, open forum. Any of the commission have, members have anything they want to discuss in open forum? I actually, I did. Noel? Hi, yes. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for allowing me to be a part of this group. Um, and the thing I wanted to discuss was there was a chemical treatment on NAB Pond on Monday for copper sulfate with copper sulfate to treat the algae blooms. And um, I was, Carol had uh, given me some paperwork on the, um, uh, what the NLPA had. Uh, in place for them to do um, as far as uh, there's a education and community outreach program that they're supposed to be implying um, and I've reached out to Dan Doherty about that and I haven't reached uh, he hasn't gotten back to me about that so I was wondering if anybody on the committee knew what sort of educational programs were available to people in Navnasset about um, keeping the water quality good and uh, all of that. So I was wondering if anyone had any insight on that. I do remember they used to have a component of that, but I haven't seen anything in some time. Okay. Margaret, uh, Marilyn? I remember, didn't they used to send letters out, certainly in awareness that the lake was being treated? And didn't they also post signs when the lake was being treated, which is not the education piece you're necessarily asking about, but they would warn them and tell them that that was happening. I think they also put it in the paper, but I thought they did something years ago and it might be a good thing to, you know, find Dan and, re and reintroduce. I don't know if that's exactly what you were speaking to Noel, I think you were looking for more of the educational component as to, you know, the why we are doing the treatment as opposed to. And uh, also what Marilyn was talking about is uh, the day of the treatment, I was riding my bike around the pond and um, a lot of, I spoke with numerous members of people who live on the pond and um, they weren't aware that anything was happening on that day. And I actually um, yelled out to people that were swimming in the water to let them know that 
the way, you know, it had been treated. And there just seems to be not a lot of awareness um, with the community. Okay, Marilyn? One other thing, I think I saw it in the newspaper because I think it can't, you know, I'm not saying that's enough because people don't necessarily read the patch or the little blurbs from the Eagle. But I saw something on my computer at work which indicated maybe it's even on the front page of, of the uh, uh, website from the town. But I don't disagree that a one-to-one -one neighbor thing would have certainly been the best way so those people wouldn't go in the water. So you know? can I add a couple things? Um, it's my understanding that the association sends out an email to everyone. I don't think they do like a phone chain or anything and they don't do door to door. Um, they do post for certain things for treatments. I don't know if it's required for the, um, the algal bloom or not. And they do notify the town and the health department did put out something on the website and notify the rec department so that the beaches were closed for that day. And I guess on the educational component um, and a couple of other parts of it, I know that they've done some outreach, you know, they had um, before I started here, so it's been a while ago, they did some kind of a program um, with the town that was, I guess, a big watershed related outreach. And then since I've been here also with the town, because they've they formed a collaborative, the Healthy Lakes and Ponds Collaborative. So they also did a forum, I think it was just two summers ago on turf management and talking about, you know, how to take care of um, lawns so that you didn't necessarily need to be um, fertilizing all the time. And then the associations, the some members of the association um, boards or the people who have been participating in the Healthy Lakes and Ponds, last summer there was um, a DEP or DCR Weed Watchers program where they came in and identified all the different types of plants and gave some handouts and helped people to be able to go back to their lakes and ponds and, and make sure they were identifying things correctly. So I'm not saying that there can't be more, but there definitely has been some. And then annually, there is a report that's done by um, the companies that are hired to do the treatment um, and their consultants who do the assessment. So there are annual reports. I think I did direct Noel also to the either the engineering um, page keeps them or the health department um, keeps them on the websites. That was just a little bit of extra. Is that enough, Noel? Well, I was I was hoping that maybe the commission could look into this and um, just make sure that all of the things that the NLPA is supposed to be doing um, are being done. I noticed today on Sandy's Beach there were no signs posted that there had been a treatment. Um, so I I think maybe we should look into um, what is being done to uh, make the community aware and also educate them on what is being done. So when are they up for, um, they've got to go through the permitting process again though, don't they? I think that they, I don't know when their order condition expires right now. I didn't look that up. Um, but because their order's already been extended for several times, they would have to do a new application when before that one expires. Or when it expires. Marilyn? I think it would be a good idea, Carol, uh, as a follow-up, since we feel like there's some notification, but maybe there are old people like me, although I do use the computer, but some people will not. They'll need snail mail. So it's not sufficient to just do things by email. Not necessarily does everybody read their email or get their email. So I think a, a note to Dan that we, you know, this came up, and so we'd like him to tell us how they told everybody in that area that it was not safe and that they needed to stay out of the water, and if not, asked him to do it in a different fashion. I think a direct mailing, I know it's expensive, you know, but you need something to make sure everybody has heard, and that, that to me, could work. Okay, well, I'll check with Dan. I know he was away last week, so Noel, he may not have gotten back to you because he's kind of getting back into things. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, before I move on, you know, I was going to introduce the commission members in the community to, to Noel, but she kind of introduced herself. So, uh, 
<laughs> Again, it's a pleasure to have you as a member of the Conservation Commission. Um, I'm sure you'll be a, a valued contributor and uh, contribute to the success of the commission. So, you know, I'm happy to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda oh, item. Which is, oh, I did have, have a couple of open forum items. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to let people know that the selectmen have um, agreed that town special town meeting is going to be October 17th and it'll be at 10 a.m. and held at the Westford um, Fields again, the uh, alumni field. And I guess um, along that line, Marilyn, are they, are, is CPC taking applications before that meeting? Only applicants. Nobody has contacted us. That's number one. Um, we only take emergency ones. Okay. Uh, if we, we are having our own meeting in September to debrief, unfortunately, we couldn't have it before. So right now there are zero applications and no CPC. We wouldn't take a normal application. It's out of cycle. Okay. okay. We, we had talked at the last meet or at one of our meetings about whether the water lines might fall within that scope of work. So I just didn't want to lose the opportunity. Uh, it wouldn't be until spring unless you thought there was a real emergency with those water lines, in which case you would need to get a hold of Jesse and try to get something in. But if it's not an emergency, we're not taking it up. Okay, and the only other thing I wanted to just say is um, at, at East Boston Camps, and I think I did email you, but just to let others know, the public know, um, we did agree to, I did agree to extend the park and rec program so through oh, September excellent. 4th. Excellent. So, yeah, and school won't be going back until after that, so they needed something to keep it going. There you go. All right, I'm all set, thanks. Great. Okay, we're going to move on to our um, public hearing for uh, Bernstein. Get to my legal notice here. This is a legal notice in the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Wetlands Protection Act and Westford's Non Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 12, 2020, at 7 30 p.m. via remote participation on the notice of intent application of Noah Bernstein for the construction of a boardwalk and canoe platform and associated site improvements in and within 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland at the unnumbered river. Street parcel. Um, that's sufficient. Yep. So, Noel, uh, um, Noel, is Noel here? Noel is I am. So, Noel's here. Can he um, start his presentation? No, it um, so I don't really have much of a presentation, but if you would just like me to briefly go over um, my project Certainly, again, I yeah. have to do that. That'd be fine. Okay, yeah. So um, for my project, I am improving a uh, the existing uh, kayak and canoe launch off of River Street um, on the backside of the Stony Brook Conservation Land. And uh, part of my plan, it would be uh, to clear out and uh, pretty much form a new parking area um, directly off of River Street, um, as well as leveling the path and filling in ruts um, down the path towards the water. Um, and then build a 24 foot long boardwalk, which would uh, connect to a eight foot platform at the water's edge to launch kayaks and canoes from. Okay. Commissioner, have any questions or um considerations concern in regards to this notice no. Jim unmute yourself Jim any um, reason why a t-shaped dock instead of just a straight line from the shore um, we didn't really want anything um, like protruding into the water uh, just to minimize uh, maintenance during the winter no, I don't understand. The the dock in the water is a, it's like a T shape, right? Um. So with the plan right now, there is uh, no dock in the water. There would just be a platform that um, till the water's edge. It doesn't even uh, it doesn't go out into the water at all. Oh, okay. I I was looking at the last 
the last diagram, I thought it was extending into the water. So this just goes on the on the soil, and that's it. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I was wondering about um, just laying down the wood chips and whether or not I don't know what I can't I can't picture how um, vegetated that area is. I don't know whether that's going to be sufficient or maybe with parking on it will keep the weeds down. Sometimes when people put in the the um, that kind of a area for parking, they might use like a landscape cloth. I just wasn't sure whether we were going to have more maintenance with wood chips or are they going to break down or whether we think that's a good idea. Hmm. I haven't thought about that yet. Um, but so currently the parking area is mainly just uh, tall grass, with a little bit of a uh, bare ground. Um, so I think if we cut the grass to ground level and then lay the wood chips, that would prevent any uh, farther grass and weeds from growing up. Good with that, Carol, or? I think we'll have to think about it. I, I, I'll look at the site again and see. I, I just know that, um, I mean, if there's enough parking on it, it might be okay, but, you know, weeds like to come through even concrete and asphalt, so. I think Noel had a question. Yep, Noel. I, I actually use this area quite a bit to go kayaking and paddle boarding. Um, and there, there are currently two spots that are um that people are able to park on um i went down there today again to look at it to check it all out um after i saw the proposed plan here and um i never run into anybody down there the, the many times that i've been down there so i'm not really sure how useful a four parking uh lot of a, a lot excuse me a parking lot for four cars would be um i think that the two lots that are there for parking would probably be sufficient. Um, and uh, I also don't understand why there would need to be an eight foot um, platform at the end of the, the walkway. I think that the walkway itself would be sufficient enough to get in a kayak or a canoe or anything like that. I don't really know why eight feet would have to be cleared out. There's a lot of vegetation there um so i was curious about those things um so the first thing you mentioned about the parking area um hopefully with the improvements made um it will get a lot more traffic um and the uh platform at the water's edge um the idea of it is just to provide a stable surface for people to uh, stand on at the water's edge um as well as hold on to while they're um, climbing into their kayaks or canoes because currently it's kind of just a divot into the ground and um, it just looks pretty difficult to actually climb into something. It is. <laughs> it is difficult. All right, thank you. Margaret. Um, so, so Noah, where were you planning to get the wood chips? Oh, um, and, and the reason for the question is because is, is I know the town does a lot of chipping but I'd be concerned about um, invasive plant seeds, et cetera, that might come along with the wood chips. Um, so my idea was to reach out to a few um, local tree uh, removal companies um, because I am aware that they currently pay to actually dispose of their wood chips. Um, and I would ask if they could just uh, dump one of their trucks in the area for us to uh, be able to spread out. Okay. I mean, sorry, going back to the uh, invasive species, um, the trees would be cut down in Westford. So I'm not sure if there's any uh, invasive species that would be in one part of Poison Westford ivy. and would be in the other. Plenty. Yeah, well, the, the concern would be is is um, with with chipping is if if poison ivy vines, and this may be more what the highway department does clearing brush than what a tree removal company does, but you know, when the highway's just pulling in brush and, and chipping it all together, they can get um, bittersweet and poison ivy vines in with the brush. Um, and then you've got you've got all the that seeds and stuff getting into your wood chips. But if you're if you're going to people who are only chipping trees, then you know, you should not have that same issue. 
My plan was to reach out to Scott's Trees. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them, but uh, they're a local company. And yeah. uh, I don't believe that they do really much of like brush removal, um, mm -hmm. just mainly large trees. Okay. And I was just more thinking about, because I remember the highway creating huge piles of, of chip stuff over um, by the ball fields off of River Street. And just, you know, nobody wanted to go use them because of all the other stuff that was in with the chips. So, but if you're going to a tree place, then then that addresses my concern. Marilyn? Yeah. Noah, I know Scott very well. He does a lot of work on my property and I trust him implicitly. Uh, you might tell him what our concern is. So whatever he sells you will be something that just came from trees and not other areas because he does all kinds of brush as well. I would just talk to him about it, Noah, so you get the cleanest piece that you can get from him, you know, the cleanest chips. I can do that. Thank you. So overall, what does the commission think about, um, you know, this eight foot platform to get in and out of a kayak? Um, I heard uh, Noelle's concern that maybe she thought it was a little more than what was necessary. Um, thinking of the average person who might want to uh, utilize this area, um, they might benefit from this platform. Um, thoughts from the commission on that, Marilyn? One of the things working at town clerk's office is that I have seen more trail guides go out than I have ever seen in the 12 years that I'm working on. So we have a lot more people using the trails and doing things outside that they didn't do before. Uh, I don't have a lot of trouble with this because I would hope that even though it might be a little pristine in the sense that a lot of people don't use it, I would hope it would encourage more people to come and make it easier for them. So I don't have trouble with the size of this. Jim, Margaret, and I'm okay. I'm okay with it the way it is. I, I don't think it's going to get a, a real lot of use because there's so many beaver dams on Stony Brook now that uh, it, it's impassable in a lot of locations. I'm okay. okay I think it, it might make it. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay as well. Okay. Appreciate the concern, Noel. Um. If the commission doesn't have any other questions or comments, questions from the audience in regards to this notice? I Matt, are you seeing any? I do not see any hand raise or any questions uh, that have come in. So Carl, what are the next steps here for this? Just so you want to continue it? Sorry. What? Nope, so we can just gonna continue it? Yep, you can continue it, and if you want, um, we can draft an order for the next meeting and for your consideration. Um, I just should let you know I'm not going to be attending the next meeting, but Matt will be, and Matt's very familiar with this project too. He's helped Noah through this. Fine. And what is the date of our next meeting? The August 26th. Okay. Yes, August 26th. Okay. On a motion. Sure. Motion to continue the, the meeting till August 26th. What time? Um, we don't, so we don't use times. We don't put oh, really times. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Sorry about that. I know. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. 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 Okay, I got one. Um, okay, I have a second. All those in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Okay, the uh, hearing's been moved till um, August 26th. Thanks, Noah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda item. And that would be the public hearing for 73 Netting Road. We get the legal notice. 
This illegal notice in the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act and Westford's Non-Zoning Westford Non-Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 12, 2020, 7.30 p.m. via remote participation on the notice of intent application of Kathleen M. Coyle and William J. Perry for the construction of an emergency overflow plate within Nanning Road for the Wendell Place subdivision with 100 feet of a resource area at 73 Nanning Road. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Douglas Deshane, to, to the application. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, Douglas Deshane uh, representing Kathleen Coyle and William Perry uh, with regard to the project. Um, Wendell Place is a 23 lot open space residential subdivision located off of Nutting Road. Um, it is unique in the fact that the project was designed um, and hopefully will be approved um, in a way that kept all of the work proposed outside of the 100 foot buffer zone as well as the river protection zone. So. Um, we initially felt that there would be no re need to come to the commission because we weren't going to do anything within 100 feet of a uh, of a wetland, and that is quite the feat in Westford when you're uh, working on a project of this size. But it, it worked out very well. However, in addressing the uh, drainage design, um, which conformed to all state and local stormwater regulations and um, was uh, quite frankly designed to meet all the regulations and it was it was all set, everything looked good. Um, both the uh, DPW director as well as the town engineer uh, suggested uh, that they would prefer that we provide an emergency overflow for the detention basin that was located closest to uh, Nutting Road. Um, we did not need the emergency um, overflow to meet uh, stormwater regulations, but as we were told, or it was suggested to us, uh, providing the emergency overflow was a better design and a design preferable to the town. Um, my clients agreed to provide that overflow. Uh, however, we then realized that it would require work within 100 feet of a buffer zone and within the river's protection uh, area. So we in fact did have to uh, file with the commission uh, for your review of this proposed emergency overflow. Um, at that this point, uh, if the board desires, um, Matt Waterman from Land Tech Consultants is here and he can give you a quick overview of technically uh, what we're proposing to um, install and the temporary impacts that it will have. So Matt, are you with us? I am, thank you. Um, and good evening, everyone on the on the commission, Matt Waterman, Land Tech Consultants. Um, as Doug overviewed, uh, the project is, is for a subdivision on Nutting Road, um, Wendell Place. It's a 23 lot open space residential development that's currently under review with the planning board. Um, they have issued a draft decision, um, but we are working with them and, and ex expect that um, that we'll be finishing up with them within uh, the next couple of weeks or the next meeting, excuse me. Um, the parcel is 27.4 acres. Um, we did do a abbreviated notice of resource area delineation with the commission um, probably back in 2017. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, um, at least that were on the board at the time. Uh, there was two small pocket wetlands in the in the back in the northeast corner that um, were flagged and, and approximately about an acre in size. Um, the development was geared to, to stay outside of those buffer zones for those wetland areas. Um, and, and as you can see on the, the plan that's on the screen, the the road the subdivision was designed with two roads that are approximately 250 feet apart um, and at service all of the lots um, from Nutting Road um, and 
The first road is about 1,300 feet. The second road is about 900 feet. Um, the open space, and this is kind of not part and parcel to this project, um, but I just felt it was important that, you know, when, when doing an open space plan, the goal is to try and preserve as much open space. Um, and the lot or the development has 8.93 acres, which is about 33% of the site. Um, but even more importantly, there's 12 acres of undisturbed land, which is about 44% of the development. Um, so I, I just thought it was important. The lot sizes vary from 23,500 square feet to as large as 55,000 square feet, um, with the average of about 30,000 square feet. Um, Jim? On the uh, Matt, could you focus on the, uh, the overflow pipe and uh, how it's supposed to function with uh, where the overflow comes from, where it's going, how that's going to work? Absolutely. I was just about to get into the stormwater design, um, which includes um, several larger detention basins that are that are off this plan and, and to the to the north and east. Um, but to capture the runoff that uh, um, towards the entrance of both of these roads, there's a large infiltration system which you can see in the in the middle in between the two roads. They capture the runoff for the probably the last 100, 150 feet of each of the roads. Um, it treats it, um, has 80% TSS removal, um, and infiltrates it um, fully and is designed to capture the 100-year storm event. Um, with that, uh, the, in discussing, and, and as Doug said, uh, we were working with the engineering department and the recommendations of the highway department um, and, and the many years of experience, um, as Paul Sterrett would say at our planning board meetings, was that Chip's experience was that he felt like an overflow was a necessary component um, where it is next to and adjacent to Nutting Road. Um, and there was some concerns that having the overflow would eliminate his concerns with any, any ponding and or overflowing that could potentially occur down the road. Um, working with the engineering and the highway department, we felt like um, we came to an agreement. Um, there's, there's an overflow pipe for just storm events above the 100 year storm. Um, it goes diagonally down to the south and west um, to a manhole on the southern or the southwesterly side of Nutting Road. And then it long, runs along the shoulder. Entirety, it's about 450 feet. Um, it's primarily uh, temporary work within the riverfront buffer and the wetland buffer um, and work would be completed at the end of each workday. They would backfill the trench um, and they would store their equipment at staging areas um, established with the subdivision um, in, in, the, in the Wendell Place subdivision. Um, I think it's important that you know the access would be primarily from Nutting Road um, so there's no clearing, there's no tree clearing, there's no additional disturbance. Um, it's Everything will be restored to its um, existing state. So if we're digging in on someone's front lawn, which is in the right of way, um, obviously not their front lawn, um, that would be reestablished as lawn um, and pavement and um, natural um, areas would be left to naturalize. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions. I know Doug is here and sorry for the intro. I just wasn't sure if everyone was familiar with the window place subdivision and wanted to give a quick overview. Go ahead, Jim. Why is the uh, overflow pipeline so long? I could see it being cut off maybe at a uh, two thirds of the indicated length and it would still be just about as close to the, uh, to the area where you're discharging the overflow. Uh, there's an existing culvert that runs underneath Nutting Road where we connect. And we just felt uh, it was important to, to not create another uh, you know, uh, point source discharge, if you will, um, even though it is for emergency overflows only, but it just working with the highway department, the engineering department, we, everyone kind of agreed that connecting to the existing culvert was the logical location. So that indicated head wall already functions uh, to discharge water that comes from somewhere off to the west? Correct. There's a small intermittent stream that runs in between the two, uh, are from the properties that are to the, to the north and west of our site. You can see one of the driveways on the plan that's in view right now. And th there is an existing uh, corrugated metal pipe that's in pretty good shape. We inspected it with the engineering department um, and they had no issues with it. Um, 
So Matt, this um, overflow of hype, basically, um, for, for uh, things greater than a hundred year storm event, you said? Yes, correct. Um, so is this coming from like a detention basin further up into the development? No, it would just be this infiltration system that you can see on the screen. There's a set of catch basins that are about 100 feet up on Wendell Place, which is the road on the left. And then yeah. there's a set of catch basins on the road that's shown on the right-hand side that are almost at the intersection. So it just captures the runoff for the for what we couldn't discharge into the, there is a detention basin just to the, just off the screen to the to the west or the east of this plan it's it's the largest basin in the development um so what we couldn't capture in that uh it gets picked up and put into this smaller infiltration system but does it have any treatment or you know it's not going to a detention basin for any primary treatment or anything it's just coming off the road and into this pipe and then gets ultimately discharged it does, but it does meet the stormwater management standards for pavement runoff, which is the 80% removal. Um, and that's accomplished with the pretreatment of uh, catch basins, which give you 25% removal. And then the storm tech system has mass DEP approval um, for what they call the isolator row, which is for the smaller storms get diverted into the first two rows of the pipe. And it has an extra row of or a layer of filter fabric um which gives you an additional 50 percent um and when you do the 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 spreadsheet with the mass dep spreadsheet it, it gives you the the 44 percent tss removal um with the combined with the catch basins and the isolator row so we do get the pre-treatment and then it also does it meets the the infiltration requirements the water quality requirements and infiltration requirements you know, I'm sure that engineering's probably looked at it, but Carol, I am not familiar with this type of design. I'm usually seeing something going through a detention basin. I think we've had a few of them. Isn't the one on um, Spalding that's coming down off the emergency road that goes into the um, infiltration basin? Yep, okay. But I can't remember if it went into a detention basin first or not. Um, and then there, I thought there was another one over on 110, that project that um, was the veterans home project. I thought they were doing something with an infiltration basin. So, I mean, I, I think, I know engineering has approved it. They don't have any other issues with it. Um, I think what I haven't seen is the maintenance and, the, you know, the long-term, how it's gonna work. We, I don't know. Matt, do you have any in town that you can tell us that have been in operation for a while? Um, not necessarily for a while, but one of the requirements that we're working through in the decision is the operation and maintenance. So there was an operation and maintenance um, draft um, manual that was prepared for the stormwater system for the, the subdivision as a whole. Um, it included the, the infiltration system, this storm tech system um it includes um inspections quarterly and, or and they I, they I don't i don't know it off the top of my head i apologize but they do have requirements for inspections and cleaning it out um there are inspection ports put on every line there's manholes at each end um for access um and i know and doug maybe you can chime in on what we're working with for long term potential homeowners association and annual engineering reports on the stormwater system that's to to be determined but i know we're working with the planning board on a on long-term maintenance yes in order to meet the, the the stormwater requirements we had to provide for o m um, for the entire system um and the town is going to be responsible um, for you know anything within the roadways. They will be town approved roadways, um, but for the um, anything located outside of the right of way, um, the end the planning board through the engineering department have required that homeowners association be responsible for that. Um, so we're providing them the homeowners association documentation as well as the operation and maintenance for the non-town maintained components of the stormwater 
including uh, um, that um, that system uh, adjacent to uh, Nutting. Matt, um, I, I guess I, I assumed, and I could be wrong, but given the fact that the overflow pipe uh, is being put as requested within the right of way, um, it would be the town uh, DPW that would be responsible for the maintenance of the overflow pipe itself. I believe so. They were, uh, my understanding is they didn't have any issues with um, um, kind of, what you know, pipe and, and manholes and catch basins, uh, more conventional designs. Um, the offsite, the, the, there's three infiltration basins plus this infiltration system um, that are, will all be maintained by a future homeowners association and that the highway department engineering didn't want the responsibilities of maintaining any of the components, whether it was this one or the other three, um, which are kind of more conventional um, open infiltration basins um, and that all of them collectively would be under the part under the supervision of the the homeowners association so let me ask you a question then um let's say that the homeowners association fails to properly maintain um you know this outflow pipe and you know other structures to the extent that you know we're not getting the removal of the solids and things that we we need to you know achieve our standards um what recourse does the commission have? Well, I, I can answer that, Matt. First of all, um, the town would in fact be maintaining this proposed uh, emergency pipe. Um, you're right though that the homeowners association would be responsible for maintaining the actual infiltration system itself so that if it wasn't being maintained, the town would be may certainly be aware of of, of its performance in in their looking at the pipe itself and the head wall and all of that um the the permits through the planning board require that if the first of all if that stuff isn't being maintained correctly the town has the authority and a granted easement to go in and correct any problems or to do any maintenance they that also then have the legal right to charge the homeowners association for that but i think more importantly uh, the entire um permits for the project itself as well as the occupancy permits for the individual homes could be affected uh should the homeowners association not meet their obligations so the town has ultimate control um to make sure that this is in fact taken care of we not only have to provide the homeowners documents detailing what they have to do and the o m plan, um, but I believe the town planning board usually requires a copy of any contract with the maintenance company that the homeowners association utilizes. So again, so the guys, doesn't you have an ability on its own to do any enforcement. Excuse me. So the commission itself doesn't have the ability to do any enforcement um, if the homeowners association fails to maintain the structures. Um, it's, it's up to the town and, there, and there's a course of action, but it's, it's not one that's initiated by the commission. Well, of course, yeah, well that in the first instance, you're correct. It's, it's all the town and the DPW, but understand to the extent this system isn't working correctly and it's having any impact whatsoever on that discharge or the wetlands then the commission certainly has the authority to step in there's no question there well Donna. we can step in and noel um i would like to have something in place that says that none of the um homeowners can use any sort of fertilizers herbicides or pesticides on their properties so in case something does go wrong, um, all of that stuff is not coming into our water system. Um, I don't know if we have the ability to do that. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, as part of our O&M plan, is there any restrictions on those kinds of things? No, I, but I do know that one of the conditions in the planning board is that 
we have to, and it was, and it, and it derives from the engineering recommendations that we have to follow the healthy lawn program that is established in Westford, which limits fertilizers. And, and I don't have it in front of us, but I thought that we that it limited healthy practices or it it, it, it required healthy practices of lawn care. Um, but also, Doug, and, and, I, and I meant to say on the, previously on the maintenance, um, uh, the idea is that all of this, so we have to submit an operation and maintenance manual for this drainage system. We have to submit a long-term um, maintenance program, which is almost the same thing um, for the for the drainage systems. And they all get recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and, and I believe they're going to get referenced in a, in a roadway covenant. And I know that the commission would most likely, if they were to approve this, would reference permanent O and M re requirements, and and I would think that they would have the authority if those were violated. What do you think, Carol? I guess it would be nice to get a copy of what is being proposed. We didn't really do any of the stormwater review that we normally would because it's already been before planning board and engineering. But it would be nice to see the O and M and the long-term yep. pollution prevention plan. Yeah, and we can do that. We have the O&M plan. I'm not 100% sure that we've done the long-term pollution prevention plan. Well, that would be a start to start with the O&M. <clears throat> Just while I have um, my mic open, um, you didn't show any erosion controls, but when I did talk with engineering, they thought it was probably a good idea to have some kind of erosion control during, for the, during the work course of work. So I wanted to throw that out as well. Yep. Now we can add some some straw waddles or silt fence um, along the the westerly side. Certainly. Commission members have any other uh, questions or comments? Comments from the audience. See anybody, Matt? I don't see any questions or any hands raised, Mr. Chair. Okay. Can I just ask another question, Matt, about the, just the work, the scope of work? Um, so on the northeast side, I guess, um, then there's no tree removal. Like you showed a bunch of oaks and pines. There's, there's nothing being proposed within Riverfront that's being removed. Correct. And initially, we, we had a conceptual plan that had the pipe on the, the easterly side of Nutting Road, on, on, on the project side of Nutting Road. Um, but in looking at that section, if anyone's familiar, this is when you're just coming out of the, the train trestle, if you're heading towards depot, on your left-hand side, the, the, it gets relatively steep and the oaks are fairly mature and they're, they're built on, on the slope. So there was concerns that were raised from the highway department, engineering department. Um, and, and so ultimately, you know, it was, discussed that we would move it to, to the westerly side of Nutting Road. Um, but those trees were from that original plan to, we were we were kind of troubleshooting some alternatives. And then I just wondered that little corner of that first lot, I don't see a lot number um, that you lot. had kind of speckled. Was that, that just to identify that there's a portion on that lot, there's no proposal to do any work there? Correct. Any other comments? So it looks like we'll need to continue this public hearing to get at least uh, copies of these plans that were being discussed. Yep. Okay. Um, other items that uh, commission wants to uh, see as a part of this application? Other questions? Guys, are you ready to come before us again on the 26th? I think so. We can get you the information fairly quickly. Okay. Yep. And I, I, I Mr. Chairman, I, I probably will ask Mr. Starrett to, you know, provide the commission a, a written statement to the effect that, you know, this, this pipe is, uh, or the installation of this pipe is really being generated uh, through a request. Um, from the DPW and engineering department to put this in. Uh, otherwise, 
um, we would not be proposing this and we would not be before the commission. So this understood, is understood, Doug. understood. I get this it. Is an accommodation to the to the to the department and to the engineering because we do understand it is a, a sound practice. I think a letter from Paul would be a great thing. Okay. Great. Um, Marilyn, unmute yourself, Marilyn. Matt, can you unmute her? Okay. I can hear you now. Okay, I just wanted to, if you were ready to uh, continue this, I wanted to make a motion to do that. What is it, the 26th? You good with that, Doug? Yes. Okay, yeah, make the motion then. Okay, motion so moved. Second. Do I have a second? Jim, you seconded it? Yep. Okay. Um, so all those in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Anne? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Eric? Yes. Great. We'll see you guys again on the 26th. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is a continuation of a public hearing for uh, Franklin at 31 Bridge Street. And um, for those of you who are not aware, um, you know, Mr. Franklin lost his son, you know, a couple of weeks ago and uh, um, can't be with us tonight. And I just, uh, you know, want to extend the commission's um, heartfelt sympathies. Uh, really a tragedy and um you know i personally really feel for um mr franklin and i'm i'm, I'm sorry that this has to happen to him um so i know he was looking to have this uh public hearing continued until september you know um any thoughts about it letting him extend it till october i have no trouble with that whatsoever noel i have no trouble with that um What's our uh, first uh, meeting in uh, October? The 14th, Mr. Chair. Okay, so can I make a motion then to continue this public hearing until October 14th? Marilyn? I moved. Okay, so Marilyn, give me a yes. yes. Marilyn? Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Eric, yes. Okay, we're continued to the 26th. You were going to say? I tell, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that I did send um, Chris and his family a card with your um, condolences. Yeah. Mr. Chair, was that continued to the 26th or uh, October 14th? October 14th. Did I say okay. the 26th? Yeah. The motion was for the 14th. You just yep. mentioned the 26th. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, we're going to move on to our uh, next continued public hearing, which is a continued public hearing for Stone Ridge Development, uh, Greystone Pond, and the applicant has requested to continue this public hearing uh, without discussion uh, to September 9th, uh, 2020. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Great, Ann. Marilyn, you second in it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Eric, yes. Okay, it's it's continued uh, till uh, September 9th. Okay, we're going to move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is a which is a public hearing continued and to issue an order of conditions for Bergeron at 65 Powers Road. The applicant with us tonight? Uh, yes, sir. For the record, Chris Harris with Handy and Engineering. Great. Have you had an opportunity to look over these order of conditions? 
Um, I will do over the order conditions. Uh, it's a pretty generic um, set, and we have no issue with any of the uh, requirements. Commission have any questions or comments in regards to these orders? I think um, I got a couple of comments, um, one from Merrill, and I just wanted to make sure that, that in the first paragraph under the com commission's findings, it should have said the um, actual resource area habitat of state protected rare wildlife species. It was, it was a typo. Okay. Yeah. Marilyn? Is there any way to cut back on whatever that noise is coming through? Yeah, I, I can't control it. It's not for me. It's, uh, ask Matt if he can do something. Well, I can think add. that's Mr. Anderson's phone. So if he could mute himself, not speaking, uh, should be all set. Thank you. Okay. Just Great. Hard. Jim? On the fourth paragraph under findings, it's the one that says the commission finds that an area of existing pavement will be removed, seeded for stabilization, and then allowed to, re to naturalize. Is that talking about the uh, area in front of the building, Carol? No, it's the area where the storage trailer is. Oh, okay. All right. Because uh, I, I was confused. I thought it was the area in front. And that area, I believe they're going to make it into just a front lawn. That's They're doing work out in front, but that's not within our jurisdiction. Do you want me to be more specific and say, you know, where yeah, the storage trailer is? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Existing pavement behind the building or uh, something like that. Margaret? Yeah, um, I had sent Carol <clears throat> a couple of editorial corrections for conditions 45 and 47, where there was um, there were just missing words in, in the text that she'd added. Yeah, I think I got that changed before I sent it out to Chris. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, any other comments, changes? Um, Seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the order of conditions? Uh, you were going to say, Marilyn? No, oh, I was, I was okay. just. I have a motion to approve the order of conditions for uh, 65 Powers Road as amended. So moved. Second. Uh, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Okay, we've accepted uh, the order of conditions. Um, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, Marilyn. Yes. Jim. Yes. Ann. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Noel. Yes. And Eric. Uh, yeah. Actually, Eric, where yep. Noel just joined. The commission. I'm. I'm trying to remember um, what oh, thing she has to be present for the hearing in order to be able to vote. And I. I forget whether that's to do with the orders or it's something else. The Mullen rule. Yeah, she. She's not eligible. You'll have to just abstain, Noel, for and for ones that you haven't participated in the hearings. Um, for now. So yeah, you can just abstain. Yeah. That's, um, okay. We still close the public hearing. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you Mr. very much. Chair, if I may interrupt, uh, Mr. Anderson, would you like the order sent to you? Uh, yes, please. Can you please forward that over to our office directly? Yep, we will do. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is a public hearing continued and to issue order conditions for the Westford Tennis Center. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. Uh, Douglas DeShane representing uh, the applicant. Um, we have had an opportunity to review the draft um, findings and special conditions and um, my client has no issues with the with the uh, conditions, with the exception of one condition, which I would like to discuss with the commission. Uh, and this was the commission, uh, the condition that was proposed uh, towards the end of the last meeting regarding 
a reduction in the access way around the building. Um, I, 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 if I could, um, you'll all recall that the genesis of this project was a request for not only to complete these infill areas, but also to put an addition onto the project. Um, along the way, we have worked with the commission now for quite some time, well over a year. Uh, and along the way, we, we did a lot of things to bring the site into compliance and to improve it uh, and to make it in compliance with all of its previous orders. And in doing so, I think we did a number of things that are beneficial to the protection of the resource areas. Uh, you'll recall we resolved four to five outstanding orders of conditions, some dating back, I believe, to the 70s. Um, we cleaned out both the buffer zones and the uh, wetland areas by hand, making sure that there was no debris or anything else within those areas. Um, we corrected some erosion issues that had um, developed over the years uh, adjacent to the building. Those have been repaired and 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 corrected. Uh, you recall as part of that, we provided a um, drainage uh, area around a good portion of the building to uh, prevent future erosion and protect the wetlands. Um, and then, as you know, we planted trees, cleaned uh, catch basins in resolving uh, some of the outstanding older orders. Um, also along the way, we had the wetland line redelineated to, uh, to figure out where things were. Um, in doing so, we all learned that uh, due to significant beaver activity, the wetlands have expanded to a point where they, quite frankly, are surrounding a good portion uh, of the site up to our, our current access way around the building. Um, but we also learned that the wetlands are thriving out here. <laughs> so they're, they're growing, they're, they're clean, they're doing well, and quite frankly, they're expanding. Um, so, and last and probably most importantly, um, after significant discussion and work with the commission, we modified our plan to remove the addition because of uh, concerns uh, surrounding setbacks uh, to the wetlands, which again had uh, crept even closer to the building. Um, so we've come to a point where at this point, we're asking for permission to complete the two infill areas that were previously approved and for which uh, foundations were put in and the areas were cleared and 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 quite frankly, they're ready to be finished. But uh, my client took too long to do that and the orders subsequently expired. That's why we're here. Now in requesting the new order, you'll also recall that we are now subject to providing uh, compensatory storage for those info areas which weren't required originally but we're happy to do them and and it allows us to meet uh with the wetland protection act and the local bylaws however um the commission has asked that we take our existing uh, access way around the building and we allow 20 feet of it to revegetate which would leave us approximately 10 feet of area working area around the building um, with all due respect, my client finds this to be unacceptable. Um, I mean, you know, he's been working this site for 40 years and he's been around this building and had to get around this building. And he's gotten to a point where he can do that uh, for maintenance reasons. Um, you know, we need to be able to get a machine around the building and a ladder and, and anything else that's necessary. This is a large commercial building, as you know. Um, also for safety reasons and in support of our argument that this is necessary for safety reasons, um, my client did obtain a letter from both the Westford Fire Department, um, Mr. Parsons, the safety officer, and as well as his insurance company, uh, both of which uh, proposed that the, the, um, the access area uh, be maintained as it is today that it not be reduced, but rather that it be maintained. Um, and this is what my client uh, would like to do. Um, I do believe that overall, all the work that we've done in working with the commission and everything we've done, this site is probably in as good a shape as it's ever been. And I fully expect my client to keep it that way. 
Uh, but in doing so, he really feels very, very strongly that he needs his, his, his apron around his building uh, to maintain it. it. It's just mowed. It's a grassed area, so it does provide uh, filtration for water and certainly some minimal habitat. Um, but we would please ask the commission to consider um, removing that condition, um, allowing us to finish these previously approved infills, and then we will keep the property in the condition that it's in today uh, and be very protective of the wetlands. So Doug, let me ask you uh, one question. Uh, you know, previously um, we were looking at not only um, the infill, but you know, the addition on the back. And I thought at the time you were proposing the addition on the back, um, there wasn't the necessity for the ability to access it in the back for fire and safety purposes. Um, but now there seems to be the necessity for it. To leave it the way it is so i i guess you know i i i hear what you're saying and i can appreciate you're saying but i remember earlier on in this public hearing that you were looking to develop a portion of the back and at that point in time these weren't issues um of concern and well, now they appreciate and I appreciate the fact that, you know, the insurer wants it to be maintained. And, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, at least uh, Westford Fire Department wants you to maintain this access as well. Well, and, Eric, and I, you, you, you are correct. But recall that when we originally applied for the addition, um, we had utilized uh, the wetland lines that were back, that were used when this, this portion of the building was approved um, and we felt that there would still be adequate spacing back there. Um, but as you know, unfortunately, I mean, well, first of all, the commission didn't uh, agree that we would be able to maintain enough setback. But in, in and so we had the wetlands redone, hoping um, that there was more room there than we thought. And as it turned out, there was significantly less room than we thought. And quite frankly, um, I could see where if the project, the addition were proposed with this wetland line, um, we probably would have heard from the fire department that it was unacceptable. Okay. Maybe, so, Matt, can you, Matt, can you tell us what the distances are? Because it looks like it's at least 30 feet around the back and 20 feet around the side. So the existing uh, setback to the building to the wetland? Correct. It's uh, 32.6 feet at the closest spot. Okay. Um, you know, I, ra I just raised that issue because, um, you know, I I'm thinking this is probably the, um, the last work being proposed on the site. Well, in light of the fact that they're really, with the wetlands expanding the way they have, Eric, quite frankly, I don't know if there's anything left. And, and this really would allow us to finish those infills, tighten the site up, and, and, and take care of it. And no, by, I, the way, by the way, we are amenable to putting the markers um, that were requested at that current maintenance area so that at least there's no further intrusion and that the maintenance people know not to go any farther than where they are going today. And, and the other thing too is in terms of maintenance guys, it really, you know, one of the things we've done, and I know the commission is appreciative of it. We took all the stuff, you know, my client was storing some vehicles back there and some other materials. That area is now completely cleared and devoid of anything like that. And it's grassed. And, and quite frankly, it, it's mowed a couple times a year. It's, you know, so there's not, it's just kept open and mowed. It's not anything else. And we certainly won't be storing anything in there because it is buffer zone. So. So I hear, I hear that, Doug. Does the commission to want you to think about this? I mean, we got the request this afternoon. Are you? I can live with it. Thing. Marilyn? Uh, I think I can live with it. The way it is. Jim? 
what is what he's asking for rather I mean, was there a diagram? Was there a diagram or a plan put out this afternoon or something? You, is that well, a plan? I just gave a heads up that, um, and and let Carol know that you know I would be raising this tonight, and um, my client was just we were just able to get the letters from uh, Mr. Parsons and from the insurance company, so that's what was sent over was just a heads up. I, I wanted to let the commission know or let Carol know that this was going to be a topic of discussion because it was very important to my client. And, and I know the commission did a lot of work putting this together. And I, I just didn't want this to be a surprise, Jim. So, and, and again, I had to forward over the letter from Mr. Parsons and the insurance company. So. Yeah, I said okay, I, okay. I had written it in for discussion purposes because when we last ended, we were having a discussion between 20 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, and it hadn't been completely um, determined. But that's why I also wanted to ask about what the distance was around it because you know normally, like a maintenance area isn't 30 feet; it's usually a much smaller amount. Uh, Matt Hammer, Lamplex. Uh, one thing we also have to recognize is that um, the building's pretty tall in the rear, and there's possible, um, you know, ladders and different devices are going to be needed to to maintain the, the the rear and the side of that building. Other thoughts on the commission members? You want a little more time to think about this? No. Uh, you know, Matt and Doug, how, how far would you um, feel is uh, reasonable if, if we were going to put up some sort of markers around the backside up near the wetlands, 10 feet from the wetlands, and that would give you 20 feet for maintenance purposes? Uh, I like that. Jim, my client is 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 adamant that he would like to continue to maintain the 30 feet that was approved since 1984, I believe, that has been the standard that he's been held to and been allowed to maintain. We we just don't want to change it. So I I, it's, I get my answer to your question with all due respect is we will place those markers at the 30 foot mar current edge of of maintenance. It may actually be technically a little wider than that, but 30 feet is what we understood we had in 84, and that's what he's been maintaining ever since. And and really, this whole thing is about impact to wetlands. Guys, these wetlands are thriving, they're growing there. And that's, you know, with the site not even in as good a shape as it was, as it is today, and that it will be going forward. It, it's this is a healthy wetland out there. I think part of what I see out there, Doug, is that the healthy wetland is looking to become more of the area that it wants to grow in, you know, and, and by maintaining it, you're, you're kind of keeping it from its natural course. I mean, wetlands change, and we know that with the impervious area that's been created on the site. Um, I guess the other part is that you know it was only cleaned up when we brought it to the your client because of the concerns we had so i don't see that there's anything that's going to prohibit them from storing things and you know not maintaining it um except for that we've asked for it in o and m we have a little bit more but you know they, they certainly haven't unless we asked for it well carol you could certainly put that as a condition that 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 area will be kept void of any materials, vehicles, so that it will just be a grass buffer area. I, I don't think we have a problem with, as long as we're allowed to bring maintenance and emergency vehicles in there when needed, um, I think, I know that we could commit to keeping that area clean as part of your order, which could uh, act in perpetuity, and in which case, get, you got more control. I like that. If it said it's for maintenance purposes and emergency access, that way we don't end up with um, 
stuff being stored there or piles of equipment or, or, whatever, or something or else or a shed or something well, else. I, I agree. And I'm, I'm, we're, willing, we're willing to commit to the markers and that by all means. Okay, that sounds good to me. Go ahead, Marilyn. I just want to say that sounds good to me too. If we build it into the order of conditions, there's no guessing about this. Everybody knows what it is. So I, mm -hmm. I would have no trouble with that. Oh, right, Margaret, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I, I just had a question for Doug. What's the frequency of the mowing? Um, Matt, do you know? I mean, I, 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 I I believe they only mow it when it needs to be. I'm going to probably speculate that it's anywhere between four and six times a year. Well, because that that's one of the things that I'm I'm thinking is um, is if we do um, an as needed or an infrequent mowing, then it's not so much a a maintained. Um, it, it it reduces the maintenance of it and and allows um, a bit more naturalization without it overgrowing. You know, so so if it's if it's mowed four to six times a year, to me that's better than having it mowed every week. Yeah, I know that, Miss um, Wheeler. It's not manicured like a landscaped lawn. I do know that from the times that I've been out there. Well, we could agree to that. If you know, keep it not to keep it manicured or you know, mow it four to six times a year, and we will keep it clean. I, I, I can assure you, my client will be made aware of that. And he's here, he's on the line listening, so he's in Florida, so um, he's hearing what I'm committing to, and he's hearing the fact of what you are saying about the fact that we're going to have to keep it clean, we can't store anything out there. And we just have to keep the, the grass at bay. We're not going to keep a manicured lawn. Um, Carol, can I request that, like, instead of trying to do this tonight and saying the orders are approved as amended, you know, we make these changes and see them again at our next meeting and do it then? So we're all in a group. I mean, I hear what's being said. And if, you know, if these are going to be added to the orders and the orders amended, then let's do it. But, you know, I prefer to, to see the amendment before I approve the orders. Yeah, we can redraft it and share it um, with everybody, the commission and, and the Doug and his client. And, and I'll work with Carol to make sure that we get all those details in there. Okay. Um. As far as Doug's request on behalf of his applicant about allowing this to be this area to be maintained, is the commission in agreement with that? I, I know Marilyn is, but I haven't heard any dissension from other members of the commission. Okay. So I'm guessing the commission is good with it, Doug. All right, then I will get that done, I promise. Um, other questions or comments in regards to the order of conditions from the commission or Carol? I don't um, have anything else. Okay. Anything else from you, Doug, or your client? No, thank you. And we really appreciate your time and consideration. I, no, I thank you. Get that done thank with you Carol. I'm, I'm cer we're certainly not shutting you down. Um, no, I appreciate that, Eric, and I do. And I no, know I, Mr. Ryan does. We're working with you, Doug. We've um, learned a lot over the last year, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> seeing there are no other comments in regards to the orders, um, can I have a motion to continue this public hearing until, what is it, August 26th? So moved. Um, okay, so move, do I have a second? Um, <laughs> all those in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Eric, yes. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we're going to move on to our uh, next continued public hearing, which is a continued public hearing um, for the Byrne Family Irrevocable Trust at 54 Elm Road. Hello, how's everyone doing tonight? Hey, how are we doing? Very good, thank you. So I think we received a planting plan. There it is right there, yeah. What did you think so, of this planning plan, Carol? I think the only thing that I wasn't um, wild about is the lily of the valley. I don't know that it's a native plant and it does take over. I know they were looking for some kind of ground cover to add. So I might just try to find something else um, that might be similar, but would be native. Okay. Okay. Other thoughts from the commission on, on, on the submittal? Nope. Other than Carol's suggestion, Noelle? Uh, I actually have been, uh, I did a couple site visits this past week on this property and um, I don't see why the shed can't be moved to where the seating area is. I don't know that there should be a, um, a permanent structure, not down into the ground. And if they were to move the shed where the seating area is, um, they would be far enough away from the water. And this, unfortunately, this pond is sort of a delicate ecosystem right now. It's being treated and treated and treated over and over again. And I think that if we're a little bit lax on allowing people to store, you know, to have a shed within you know, 20, I believe it's 23 feet um, that we're just looking for, you know, I don't know who's going to the property, who's going to store what in the shed so close to the water. That's really a good idea to keep the sheds so close to the water. I know that um, the applicant had discussed some of that at a, at a previous meeting that you weren't present at as to um, what he kept in his um, storage garage and, and things of that nature. But um, so you're you're inclined to have him push it back a little bit where his picnic table and stuff is, Margaret. Oh, and um kind of tied in with, with what Noel brought up is when we had the discussion at the last hearing, um, part of the conversation had been that this was a shed replacing a previous shed in the same location. And Steve Byrne was going to look and see if he had family photos showing that yes, th there was a pre-existing shed. And I was wondering if he had had any luck with that. Margaret, we discussed with Carol on the day that she had come out. My father looked through, you know, his mother's, uh, his deceased mother's photos and stuff like that. He was unable to find really much of anything when it comes to that. But as I pointed out to Carol and Matt when they came out for the site visit, the uh, the old granite step marker, which was used, you know, into it, they were the existing ones that are still there to where the new one was at. So. Um, unfortunately, my father, you know, he didn't have any from any back in the 70s. I do apologize for that, but uh, we discussed that with Carol and Matt on the site visit. And I'm sorry, my parents are correcting me to 60s. Excuse me. Um, Another thing, too, if I could real quick, Eric, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no when Carol went along and they see, like we'd said before, with the shoreline, it's not a flat shoreline. It's, you know, it's the rocks you can see and stuff by there or your contours and curves basically the rear of the shed corner is 31.8 the front right hand corner if you go towards the water it is a 32.3 uh, and then basically the one corner that's in you know issue here is the one corner at 23.7 feet um so realistically we're in compliance with the other corners it's just basically due to the, the landscape design it's a uh it's kind of like a variance of just you know six feet and uh three inches so it, it's i understand you guys like we said before the distance and stuff like that and we're basically compliant with two of the corners exposed to the water's edge it's just that one corner so 
to move something, as we told Carol, we have a position there, one, because it's where the other one seemed to have been back in the day, but most likely safety is my biggest thing here with the kids. My children range from one year old, my son's four years old, my nephew is six, there's multiple kids, my other nephew is nine, his sister is eight, and watering kids, it's a dangerous thing, it's a hard thing to keep track of. Uh, the picnic table's there so we can basically watch the streets, the cars, and everything like that, because you know, now that this road's become developed in the past few years, it's not the quiet, quaint little street that it used to be when it was dirt, and Unfortunately, people go at a crazy rate of speed down there for a dead end road. And our biggest fear is always, you know, can we see the children at all time? And, and that's one of the main things. So to disrupt the ecosystem, to have the shed drag moved or have heavy equipment in there to move it for really just one corner that's six feet, uh, you know, three inches off. That's kind of where we're looking for the forgiveness on this. And again, you know, we've been here since 19, what was it, 59? 57 you know since my father was a small kid so um that's more or less just the whole thing there is it's it's just it's we have great visibility of the water from the picnic table where we gather and we also have great visibility of the street and parking lot where the kids always play and uh they're a handful <laughs> so we just want to keep them safe and uh not disturb the ecosystem um also what do we do with all the what, what do we do with all the subsequent applicants that come forward and say, well, this is only 26 feet or 27 feet or 20 feet or 25 feet. We've been trying to hold the line at 30 for, for everybody that we possibly can. As you heard um, last uh, last meeting, we had um, uh, a gentleman that uh, wanted a shed at the back edge of his property and it would have been a little close to the wetlands back there. And so we had him move it away. Um, he he moved, it ahead, moved it and it should be no problem outside the 30 feet. Yes, sir. We really, really got to have to have a standard that we hold everybody to. I understand that, sir. But, you know, in his situation where his shed was non-existing and his yard was much, much different than this layout here, um, you know, it, it, for him, it was a, you know, I can't speak for him, but it, it's a different situation. And this is just more or less where back in 15, my parents did, you know, go to the Western Building Department. And as we all know that they didn't relate to us about this, so we understand that. But as people who are not aware of you know stuff like this my parents thought that what they were doing was completely compliant from the old commissioners um you know conversation they had and you know now this has fallen on to us and you know it's just it's basically one of those things where i don't want to get into it but we know how this came about and it's for a vindictive reason and uh, i mean more or less it's it's just totally something we've been there since the late 50s and I'd like to think as long-term tax-paying people who have never had an issue whatsoever with the town or any of thy neighbors. Um, it, it's just, you know, it, it's a lot over six feet where it's been existent and it's been there for years. It, it's, you know, we're long-term people on this lake. It's a place we gather, you know, three, maybe four months out of the year if Mother Nature's on our side. And uh, again, this is just from a spiteful, vindictive standpoint next door where in all actuality, they have two sheds themselves that don't fall under the building regulations. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me cut it there. Let's, we're not going to go into that. Yeah, I know, sir. I know. I'm just trying to bring this all up so you know, get back to the point. The commission will know what they want to do here. Um, so, Jim, you're inclined to have them move it. I am not. You unmute yourself. We have to hold the standard somehow, and if we let this go to 23 feet, then that becomes our new standard for the next applicant that comes forward. Okay, so you want it moved. Noel wants it moved. Um, Marilyn? I would not move it. I think it's been there a long, long time. I think that uh, the situations where I would then do and not feel uncomfortable about it. And Margaret? I agree that we've been sticking to our 30 foot standard, but in this case, I wish they'd been able to come up with some earlier documentation as I requested. But you think he should you think he should also try to meet the standard and move it slightly? Well, I don't I don't think he should be forced to move it, but I wish we had more proof of it earlier. One, I guess the granite step is something. Um okay, so Margaret. Oh, 
My, I agree with Jim that we, we come up with a standard and we hold everybody to it. My primary concern is with structures within 30 feet is once that structure is built and approved and we've allowed it, we, we literally no longer have any say in what is stored in it in the future. I understand the homeowner has, or that the site owner has been very clear about how he's going to use it, but through the existence of that shed for as long as it's there until it falls down, we no longer have the ability to, um, there, there, there is the risk of, of um, chemicals, oils, fuels being stored in there, which, which creates a risk of- You're inclined of to have them move it. Water. You're inclined to have them move it. Yes. Okay. And so am I. So that would be four commission members wanting him to, to meet the setback and two not. So, you know, at, at that point, I'm saying, you know, the commission's in favor of having him meet the setback requirement. Okay, but just real quick, as we discussed in the last meeting, you know, we did a lot of work with the drawings, reaching out to local nurseries. You know, we met with Carol again, time out of work to sit with her and Matt and go over, you know, basically the discussion of just where to add more wildlife and stuff and, and you know basically as the, you know for you guys to let the six inch i mean i'm sorry the six foot slide so you know as you'll see here we have the whole addition of all this wildlife and greenery that we're going to add to it and you know we're just asking for you know just basically just to, you know it's if, if you guys have said you've known the lake area it's it's a very small lot everywhere around the lake we have monstrosity of houses built that are far closer than 30 feet to the water's edge and uh it's just you know we're asking for a little forgiveness on that one corner and we're willing to plant quite a bit of trees and all that stuff that we discussed with carol and uh and it'll be behind you know it'll be behind trees it'll have more trees in the front of it to the side of it and to the far side of it and uh you know we're, we're really just asking for you guys to help us out here on something where it's over such a short amount of footage you know being six foot three inches no, I, I can appreciate the effort that you, you put into the application and, you know, the work conducted to date, but it does seem like the majority of the commission is going to want you to meet the minimum setback requirements for the shed. Okay. Um, you know, the one other thing I will bring up in this application was the discussion of the dock and the Chapter 91 license in that, and mm -hmm. I know that you have the dock and i think that commission is okay with the dock but you currently have the dock installed which um means you're in non-compliance with chapter 91. so right now i i can't see for the life of me how the commission can authorize you to leave that dock in place if the commission knows you're currently out of compliance with chapter 91 because you haven't received the license and you're really not allowed to install that dock until after you've had that chapter 91 license. Eric, I'd like to just say this. We've had a dock since 1958 that was gone for a while during maybe the mid eighties when we had our other property at the other end of Elm Road. And this is something where, let's be honest, Eric, if we go around that lake and I've been there my whole life, <laughs> there's not full licensing on every docks anywhere whatsoever. I'm not saying is, and I'm not saying that everybody's coming before me. What I'm saying to you is, mm -hmm. okay, even if you had a historical dock from back mm -hmm. in the day, according okay. to chapter 91, you couldn't even have done any work, a modification or removal of that historic dock without first getting off a chapter 91 license to do that work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I, I looked at, you know, the what a structure is, is considered under a Chapter 91 license. Um, reasons one is issued a Chapter 91 license. Um, and clearly, it seems like you're probably in non-compliance with at least two of those. You don't have permission, a Chapter 91 license for the new dock, and that's if you didn't have an old dock, but you would have had to have received a Chapter 91 license to do any work in regards to removal of the old dock prior to installing the new dock for which you didn't have a license for. 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is you're probably going to have to, you know, the commission should have you remove this dock until such time that you receive your chapter 91 license or in, and at that point you'll be in compliance with the state. So I should take my boat out that my kids enjoy dearly every year for a long time myself growing up. Absolutely, until you get your chapter 91 sir, license. As we talked about before with Carol, that we're in we're in the process of going chapter 91, which is something no one in my family's ever heard of before till this. And thank you for educating us on it. But we're in the process of moving forward with it. But unfortunately, due to COVID and everything just being extremely difficult to get done. It's something that you know we are trying to comply with now that we have been aware of it because we've never heard of it before, and um, you know it's something that there's a few weeks left in the summer at best, and uh, you know we're trying to comply with it, but we're in the process of, as Carol knows, and unfortunately, if we could speed it up, we'd love to, but we can't, and that's why Carol had mentioned we had a further date on that, and you know you guys have discussed with the previous gentleman on the board that. They had never forced someone to take a dock out before, so I'm not quite no, sure why. I think, I, I think we might have misinterpreted Chapter 91. Um, I don't believe that we have the authority to allow you to have the dock in place if having that dock in place is is basically an issue of non-compliance with the state. What about the guy that backed over the land next door? Eric, I'm kind of just lost for words right now. I'm just trying to take this all in. You know, it's, uh, we discussed something else before and with Cal and in now, like I said, it's it's chapter 91. I've never heard of it in my life. My father has it. No one else has. I'm sure my neighbors haven't either. Now that you've brought it to my attention, as we said before, absolutely no problem. We'll move forward with chapter 91. And as Carol pointed out, that due to COVID, things are very slow with the courts and legal processes throughout the state. The authority to allow you to keep that dock in place until you get your license. Well, that's the thing, sir. We are moving forward and we don't know when the license would be, which I'm guessing would be not so next and I'm season. I believe the commission is required to have you take that dock out until you get your license. You have it in and you're in non-compliance and we're aware of that situation. Okay. And I don't believe that the commission had the authority to say, you know, you can leave that dock in play, you know, for the end of the season. Really, you're not supposed to have the dock in there until you get your license. Do we know how many Chapter 91 licenses might be on Nabnasset Lake by any chance? That's not germane to this discussion. You're before but the it is, sir, because now I feel like I'm being harassed because this is from a vindictive neighbor who brought this to everyone's attention. So if he brought it to your attention and now you know of it, then I guess I'd have to be the elephant in the room on Nab Lake where, as we've all discussed, and I won't say people's names, but they all say that we all know that this really isn't enforced on this pond, never has been. Now that it's brought to us, we have to look into it. But at the end of the day, there's probably not many, if any, that have a Chapter 91 license. And again, as I've said, once you brought it to our attention, we fully will work with it. We're going through the process of, but I find it a little irrational that I have to take my children's dock out that they fish off of, my boat that they go out swimming in and driving around in. It has to be gone. And we've had this my whole life, sir. I'm 38 years old. I've grown up every summer on that lake. And this is mind blowing that I would have to pull that. No, oh, sorry, kids, you can't fish anymore because the guy next door, you know, looked up chapter 91 that no one's ever heard of. And now that it's just been brought to our attention and we're just, trying to. Let me just, when in looking up chapter 91, you know, it says authorization is required for placement, construction, or alteration of any structure, regardless of size, whether permanent or seasonal. Yes, sir. So, and I understand that. So we are 100% trying to move forward to get that. But, and unfortunately, but, you, but you can't put the dock in before you get your license. And that's what you've done. But sir, and the like, dock like, is removable. Eric, like I said, though, we've never had a license in since 1957, along with most other residents besides the new people that have moved into the area. I'd like to consider ourselves some of the 
older people on that Nasset Lake because my father remembers when it was a couple small cabins that were seasonal. And like I said, now that we have learned of Chapter 91, we are in full compliance of it and on board for it. But unfortunately, I can't speed that up to have it this year. Ideally, I wish I could have it tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. So I would like you, sir, if you and the rest of the board could help the kids maybe enjoy the rest of their summer and enjoy their fishing and enjoy their boat rides and know that we are going to have a Chapter 91 compliance as of next spring or the dock will not go in. Is that a fair deal, sir? I don't know if, if I can agree to that. Um, Marilyn? I wonder if we can get a legal opinion so that we know whether we are allowed to give him the latitude because of COVID uh, to uh, wait until we get a ruling. I know, for instance, that people cannot be evicted from buildings because of COVID. So can we get a legal ruling on this so it won't be as though we're just doing something to somebody? But that we feel we have to follow the law that we're allowed to do. I would feel a lot better if we could. What do you think about that, Carol? <laughs> I think it would be an interesting opinion to get. Um, I mean, technically, because of the different um, executive orders, I don't think the commission has to act on this order, this notice of intent even, you know, you could have chosen to not be holding your meetings. You know, some commission members are not, some some towns are not actively, you know, even doing things. So I don't know what the answer would be. Um, you know, it, it, I'd certainly be happy to look into it if you want. I would. Marilyn? My first choice would be to see if we could get a legal opinion. My second choice would be to let him set it up the season and give him a date and then have him remove the dock. Okay? That would be my personal choice. If we had the authority to do that. Yes. That's the question. I don't even know if we have that authority, but a legal That's opinion, I'd be all for that, Meryl. That is why we need to ask somebody who can tell us so that it's not because we think it's this way, which we very well may, but we can be sure that it's clean, okay? Because I, I, I do feel, unfortunately, that there are a lot of people out there doing something that they didn't know they couldn't do or looking away from it. I would feel a lot better if I had a legal opinion giving me some direction on this because it makes it more neutral, and then I would feel much more comfortable. Yeah, I, I don't see, I'm not looking at anybody bringing this to my attention or being, you know, we're not trying to do anything here that we wouldn't be trying to apply somewhere else. It's somebody brings you something to your attention and you research it and, and you find out, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't be, you know, looking at this the way we have been in the past. So I would prefer the legal opinion. Margaret? Um, just in terms of precedence, it, it, I seem to recall that earlier this summer we had a similar issue with a dock on Long Salt Four Pond that had been installed without a chapter 91 and we sent the homeowner to do it. Carol, am I remembering correctly? And what did we set as the status of that doc while the chapter one license application was in process? You didn't require it to be removed mm -hmm. and you didn't require it to, them to obtain a license with any, within any certain time frame. Okay. That's why this feels obligatory. I know, but now we know more than we did then. So get a legal opinion, which is what we so seldom do this uh, in terms of the legal opinion, and I would feel a lot cleaner about what we're doing here tonight. No, I, 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 I respect that. <laughs> but, but I think, you know, and, and I think we, we left it kind of up in the air with, with the long software, but, you know, I would really want a Chapter 190, Chapter 91 license in place before the doc goes back in in the spring. That, I have no I problem mean, with that. Absolutely. My, yeah. problem, my problem was saying, take it out today, okay? I would, I, I would like the eviction. Number one, I want the legal opinion. Number two, I would allow him to finish the season. And I, I agree well, that with that. depends the, on the legal opinion. Uh, well, obviously, obviously. Okay. As opposed to where he has to go tomorrow and pull it out. Doesn't feel good. And I usually don't like things that don't feel good. 
think we can get that done, Carol? Uh, I would expect so. Okay. We can try. So I guess part of what we have to ask is for a, a summary on um, what our authority is with respect to, to docs uh, without um, without a current license. Are we required to do something or are we allowed to? Do we have discretion? I don't I don't know. Yeah, and, and I think Jim, that's a very good point. We we want to know what's required of us um and, and we and what we're authorized to do because it's starting to sound like, you know, we've seen two so far this summer. Are we likely to see an increased number going forward? And we we probably want to have a, a clear way of dealing with them um as more of them come up. Okay, well, why don't I plan to draft the question and and share that um, just to make sure I've captured everyone's you know concern before I send it to town council. Okay. Okay. So what we should probably do is uh, you know continue this public hearing until you know till we get you know town council's opinion back and we can go from there. You know, it might take a Gonna yeah, be it, so when do you think we should continue this to? Um, well, I know I'm not going to be at your next meeting. I, I'm sure I could get if if council responded. You know, Matt, I'm sure we could be copied on it. But if you if you want to wait till the um, first meeting in September, and then I would be back at that meeting. And that's what the ninth. I'm um, just looking again. I think so. Yes. That sounds good. Okay. Um, Our applicant understands all this. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Marilyn. Welcome. Yeah, because I, you know, I just want to do what's right and you know what the law requires us to do. Marilyn. One other question: If it turns out that you know we have to follow that rule. Does it also mean that we have to send a note to everybody on the lakes? Yes. Advising them that we have found this out so that we put people in compliance? Or do we do it until they call? Just well, I guess that would be another thing that if you wanted to add that. Um, I mean, it's not just now, Blake. Any great pond requires Chapter 91 waterway licensing for certain and things. Maybe it's Maybe it's done through their associations, OK? that we've been made aware of this and they need to know that this is something that all of them need to do. Well, they so, have to right. do there was a program in the 90s when um, DEP had an amnesty program and and at least the town I was working in then, people around on the ponds were notified of the amnesty program and they were able to do like a really simplified filing and get you know their, their license. So I don't know what happened in Westford if they if a different region of the DEP didn't do that or or whatever. But um, you know, it's, I it'll be interesting to see what the opinion is. I don't. I always have thought it was the opinion that you know we notify people that they need to get a Chapter 91 water license, um, and and usually that would take care of sort of our responsibility. But we'll be good to see what they say. Yeah, because what what it would do is take it out of this feeling of one person that we, we make do it, or two people, we make it fair. We wanted a standard. If we find out we, that we have to do a certain thing, then we tell everybody equally what is needed. Then I feel a lot better about what we're doing. And we have the rationale behind us for, for the requirement. That's you fine. Know? If yeah, you no. something, I'm very happy with that. OK, okay? good. That may be. This way doesn't feel good. No, but getting a legal opinion does. I got it. That's why I put it out there. There you go. All right. Um, anything further from the commission um, before we uh, continue this public hearing? Matt, anybody from the audience looking to say anything in regards to this public hearing? I see no hand raised. I see no questions. Okay. Um, seeing none, can I have a motion to continue the public hearing until September 9th? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Mark? Well? Yes. Eric, yes.
Thank you. We'll see you on the ninth. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, we're going to move on to our uh, next agenda item, which is a request to modify the approved plan for a three Kersey Circle. Anybody on uh, line for that? Yes, can you hear me? I can. Hi, good evening. This is. So, uh, uh, what... Yep, sorry. Sorry. So tell us about the modification. Yep, this is Dave Bauer. I'm here with my wife, Karen. Um, wanted to start by saying thanks to the commission for uh, keeping things moving during the pandemic. Uh, must be difficult. And uh, wanted to also comment that uh, Carol was uh, quick to respond and to help answer my questions about the application. So thank you for that. Um, tough, uh, tough application to follow, considering that I'm talking about the 30 foot setback, but I hope we can take a fresh look at this. Um, as I'm sure you would, every application is unique, but um, I uh, have an approved or active order dating back to 2015 to renovate my house and uh, made an effort, uh, and Carol was here at that time, made an effort uh, to put everything on the plan that I could conceive uh, as part of kind of a master plan um, for the project, and that included a pool at the time. Uh, and ran into a number of issues that I outlined in my memo. Um, you know, admittedly or candidly, uh, one of the there, there was a flaw on my initial application and order where I had shown the pool over the front setback, uh, the 50 foot front setback, and that was that's my error. So, um, regardless of the circumstances, I have always needed to come back to show you the new proper pool location. Um, but I did run into some unforeseen issues that you can see in my memo. Um, I, I trust you've all seen it already, so I won't belabor it, but um, ran into some really challenging soils, uh, um, non-structural soils, which I'm sure you're familiar with in Westward, um, requiring helical piles and uh, new architecture because I had to basically throw out um, my plans and permit for the house expansion. Uh, again, shame on me for not figuring that out before I had bought the architecture, but um, just wanted to give you that color. Um, and uh, if that wasn't enough, uh, I had to replace my septic during the process too. Um, so as it, um, and you know, and I, I hesitate to use the word hardship because there there's a lot else going on in the world right now that's truly hardship. So I don't, I don't wanna come off like um, I'm raising that for sympathy. I just want you to understand the circumstances and why the pool is where it is and why I'm asking um, for some relief um, on the 30 foot setback. So uh, the pool area um, is shown on the plan that you have up, but I also created a diagram on the third page of my memo that um, I think really paints the picture of what I'm dealing with. The, the pool area is hemmed in by three different setbacks. The front setback off the road as labeled, the 10 foot required setback off the house, and then the 30 foot buffer from the wetlands. Um, so I've been working for a number of months with uh, pool vendors um, and landscape architects to try and figure out a way to achieve the project goals while respecting those setbacks. So the pool that you see here is just that. It's my attempt to have a pool that is a reasonable size, um, that's worth doing considering how large of an investment it is, and staying within those setbacks and not putting the structure of the pool over any of those setbacks. The challenge does, that- Excuse me, does the, does the blue on that diagram you were just showing indicate the water or the pool plus a, a, a concrete apron? That is just the pool water. So it is the apron and fence that I'm here to talk about tonight. So in order to meet the minimum requirements for the uh, apron or patio around the pool, I, I need to add five foot of patio at a minimum around the pool and the required safety fence. And that's the area shown below in the box to the left where you can see that that patio and fence um, crosses over the 30 foot setback for a total of 70 square feet as outlined in the red box. Um, and off to the right is my proposed uh, mitigation. 
and um, Carol can elaborate, but uh, in, in my original approval, we agreed to um, give back uh, an extra, um, put it in my memo, 1,350 square feet of um, usable lawn back to the wetlands and um, fence off that area with um, 270 feet of, 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 the, of that brown vinyl fence um, labeled as a restricted area. So we, we completed all that work, gave that land back to the uh, resource area. And um, what I'm proposing, while the pool and this patio um, is in the middle of the lawn, and if you go to the last page of my memo, you see the pool site. Um, this this area we're talking about, the 70, I'm sorry, second, second to last page. Uh, yeah, it should be the last page, but that's the pool site right there. Um, so the 70 square feet that we're talking about is in the middle of that manicured lawn. And what I'm proposing um, that I've outlined in the red triangle is to give back the equivalent square footage um, of true, true wetlands by moving the brown fence further into the lawn as mitigation for that for that area. Um, so that's my request. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you'll give it consideration. So your closest points with the pool apron in your fence is probably what, 25 foot to the wetland? I would say so because uh, I, I am holding to the minimum uh, apron, which is, I believe, five feet. Um, so I believe it's 25. And, and again, I, I have the ability to give back a much higher quality resource area and if the commission, you know, would feel more comfortable with the two to one ratio, I have the land to do that. I'm just trying to maintain um, the access around the pool area. Apron constructed. Is it is it pavers or is it poured concrete or what is it consists of? Uh, the intention would be uh, pavers for the pool deck, the pool patio. Pervious or impervious? Haven't made that decision yet, but you know, open to um, the pervious if that's what you feel is necessary. Um, did, did you look at rotating the pool 90 degrees so that it's the, the length of it is parallel to the um, the, the uh, 30 foot no disturb line? I sure did. And um, uh, we did not only test pits, but um, borings with a geotechnical engineer uh, that I won't tell you how much that cost, but it was not inexpensive. And um, beneath the ground here, the structural soils drop off dramatically um, in that area. And so it's not very far from the pool that I'm showing here that I had to put helical piles that went down 30 feet beneath the screen porch that I did add. So um, not only am I hemmed in by the front setback, the house setback, and the 30-foot buffer, but I'm trying to manage the uh, non-structural soil problem to the back of the house. Um, also, have you have you checked to see whether you could potentially get a variance to the setback from the building or the setback from the street? Um, well, I'm quite certain that the setback, well, let me say on the house setback, um, I, I don't believe that I would get um, relief on that, nor do I really want to dig closer to my house. It's a 1970 construction with um, footings that are somewhat non-existent, believe it or not. Um, and again, I have soil concerns where I really don't want to undermine that foundation. So I'm not very comfortable going closer to the house. and I am uh, already proposing to, um, you know, have the fence for the pool area be right in line with the front of the house. And um, I also, I have the new septic field that you can see on this plan that I really don't want to move closer towards either. So moving everything towards the front of the street um, seems like a worse impact in some regards. Um, and again, I, I'm focused on the fact that the impact I'm creating is in the middle of my 
existing lawn right now. Uh, and my hope is that you'd recognize that the opportunity to get back a much higher quality uh, resource area um, is, is worth something in this case. Go ahead, Noel. Um, I would. I had a question about the proposed pool equipment site. I'd like to see that be a little bit closer to the house and a little bit farther away from the wetland area, especially since this area seems to be not so steady. Is that something that could happen? Um, well, the one place I certainly wouldn't want to or can't really put it is on the is between the pool and the house because that's how everyone would walk from the front yard to the backyard and, and around the pool. But um, if you're suggesting to just slide it up the hill um, closer to the street um, could certainly, you know, push the push the uh, six foot vinyl fence out a bit more and try and get it further away. If that's would that be acceptable? I'm just concerned about the um, the chemicals that are going to be in that shed being so close to the wetland. Well, it's definitely not a shed. It's just the it's just the concrete oh. pad with a pump on it. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. Would you put that that structure where the proposed fireplace is? I mean, that would that would somewhat move it a little bit farther away. Not really. Yeah. I mean that's the type of adjust the type. I, I'm sure I could move it, you know, a few feet or several feet, and just kind of rejigger that area a little bit to get it a little bit further. I just I'm I'm so hemmed in, <laughs> you know. You can see. Um, so so, um, I was not on the commission when this project was originally um, reviewed and approved that I can remember. Was the area within the 30 foot setback already maintained as lawn? It, it was already maintained as lawn and an additional five feet behind the three foot vinyl fence was also maintained lawn. And I gave that back um, okay. by put, by moving the fence in five feet with okay. the placard. I, I just wanted to understand, it, I just kind of, it was, it was helpful for me to know um, what that area looked like when the project was initially proposed. Thank you. Yep. Any other thought? Uh, go ahead, Jim. Uh, Carol, have, have you uh, taken a look at the um, area that they had proposed for a restoration area in that vicinity? Is that a reasonable um, location to actually add to the to the wetlands if, if we were to subtract the area out by the pool? So I haven't looked at it recently. I, d I do know the area pretty well just because of different projects that have been going on in the area. So I've, I've been by it a number of times and from um, what Dave submitted with his photographs and my re my recollection of that spot, I do think it would be suitable. So I think it would be fine to, to get um, additional protection in that location. I know in, in general, you try to do uh, restoration close to the area where you're having an impact. Um, but we do have the whole border of the wetlands around the whole edge of the yard. If, if, maybe if there's a better place to put um, like a, a two to one um, ratio. I, I mean, it, I can, I can walk it again with room. Dave or with his wife um, to take a look at that in case there's some place that strikes me or them, you know, when we look at it together. That would be good. You know, and it, I, I guess if you're going to take a look at it, um, you know, this area within the 30 that needs the uh, pool apron um, and the fence, you know, perhaps um, pervious pavers, you know, might help alleviate some of our concerns. But I'm curious as to, you know, I think you're saying there's like maybe 70 square foot that's within the uh, within the 30, and you know he's saying that it's at its closest is 25 feet. And it would be nice if we could tweak that a little bit somehow. Okay, 
Okay, well, we can look at where the, um, I don't, what, do you have anything laid out there, Dave, that we can look at that particular spot? Or could you flag uh, it out or stake it? Yeah, it's very easy for me to flag out. And um, again, if if you look at the pool area and the setbacks, um, yeah, I, believe me, I, last thing I wanted to do is to come in and ask for this relief after everything I've been through. Uh, I just could not achieve it. So I, I'd hope that I, we could talk about, you know, two to one um, mitigation. Uh, be happy to do that and look at the land with Carol to figure out the, the highest quality resource area that I could get back. Other than that, any other questions or comments from the commission? It sounds like Carl's going to need to go out and take a look at this, and perhaps um, other commission members, if they want to take a look at this as well, should should take the opportunity and do so. Uh, Noel, I had a question about the proposed privacy planting. Um, is there any way that we could make that because it's going to be in the thirty foot wetland buffer? Buffer, could we make those plants? we allow those plants to go in be um, a native species like a sweet pepper bush or a holly bush or something like that i don't even okay. know what the planting is yeah well, i i did not call out a species i just wanted to um show my intention to um have some privacy screening so i'm certainly as long as it can be something that achieves the privacy goal i'd be happy to um look at you know, species that you're, you know, willing to approve. Well, and, and generally what we do is we, we require um, native species, um, you know, that would, would naturally grow in Westford. So, but yeah. And, and yes, Noel, that's, that's something we can ask for, or that's something we can state. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, other member other questions from the commission no. um well, can i just ask you for a matter of timing um so i've got a couple of weeks of vacation at the end of this month in the first week of september dave where are you with trying to get your approval and construction i'm glad you asked me that question because um i after talking to the vendor, I'm going to have to tack on um, what looks like an extension to the order as well, because the vendor is not available uh, to mobilize until um, early spring. Um, I, my, my challenge is that um, in order to actually stay on the schedule for the spring, I need to make a commitment um, in the near future. So, And I can't make that commitment until I know um, that I'm okay with with this commission. So I, I do feel while I'm not starting the project this fall, as I'd hoped, I do feel the pressure of um, not losing the sprint. Okay. So so the order, happy to the, yeah, the order is good through July of next year, July 14th. Okay. So, oh, might, so then, well, might, might make it, but it'd be nice to get a little yeah. bit of breathing room because I probably yeah. wouldn't be wrapping up some of the finer points that get a certificate of compliance. Um, by July. I guess I, my reason in part for asking also was to see if there were other members who did want to go out and do a site visit that just might take some coordination. So, and where I had a couple of weeks off, I didn't want to um, either be rushing at, be rushing everyone to get out there or, you know, if, if what time we needed to kind of get it done by. Was there anybody who wants to, to do the site visit? Okay. I'd go, Carol. I'd go. Jim. So okay, so Jim, Margaret, and Noel all are interested. Anne didn't say. Okay. All right. So um why don't Dave I throw out some dates, but I guess if you do you want to continue it to the September 9th meeting again and just see if we can fit it in before that time, or even that might be tight, but we can see. I'd certainly like to try if we could. Okay. okay. Um any well, I guess it's not a hearing, so I guess you can just continue it for discussion purposes to that. Um, motion then they can uh, continue this request to modify the approved plan until uh, September 9th. Do I have a second? Second. second. Um, all those in favor, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Yeah. 
Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Eric, yes. Good enough. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to um, our discussion and action items. And uh, first is a request for permission to serve alcohol at the September 19th wedding at um, East Boston Camps. Okay. Hi, my name is Rachel. Mm -hmm. My fiance, uh, Mark, is here with me, and we will be holding the wedding on September 19th. We actually moved it from June, obviously, due to COVID, we couldn't hold it in June. Um, so we are asking that we serve alcohol. We are not selling it, only serving it. Um, yeah. So a couple of things that I noticed. Um, originally, I think you had uh, plans for, what, 85 up at these Boston camps for the wedding? Correct. And I think now the governor's put in place something that uh, you can't have more than, what, 50 people? 50. So originally we had, so we have a few, obviously, you know, we definitely want to comply with what the governor allows. Um, so we are actually planning now to have two services um, where a lot of our older um, guests, like our parents and our aunts and uncles, um, can come in the early afternoon morning and we'll do a, ser um, a, yeah. a service and lunch with them and then they would, would take off and then we'll do a second service with some of our younger guests that, you know, want to go throughout the night and stay overnight. and. Uh, and so basically split it up into two groups so that we're complying no more than 50 at one time that will be at the camp with us. Okay. Um, Jim? Uh, I had tried to make contact with our uh, Board of Health um, director today, but I had called back from him. So I went through the, um, the all the details I could find online um, on the COVID page for the state of Massachusetts. And there's a, an awful lot of requirements for uh, sanitization of equipment. Everything that's gonna be touched by anybody, it's gotta be sanitized at least every 24 hours. You have to have, um, uh, what do you call it, hand sanitizer stations scattered or, or entered it, uh, in locations everywhere there's an entrance or an exit from any building that people are gonna be using, as well as around the, the uh, areas where people are gonna be congregating. And that's in addition to that uh, 50 person limit, which is down from 100 or 25 people outdoors. Um, there's some pretty uh, severe restrictions that um, I don't think we're going to be following them. I don't think anybody is on this property. Um, you know, the, the bathroom, the, uh, the, the bathhouse, that, that would have to be uh, sanitized at least every 24 hours, maybe more. Um, it just isn't isn't going to happen with the way the property is managed and run now. Um, I think there's, there's problems with uh, with having this still. Well, well let it be there. Right. We we are only going to be there for like 24 hours. So I mean, un, under those constrictions, and we do have servers that are coming. It's not just like our friends. No one, you know, will be. They'll be serving the food. They'll be wiping things down. We've ordered hand sanitizers, an individual bottle for every single person. We actually have masks um, in our wedding colors that people can wear, and we're asking people to bring their own masks as well, but we do, we're providing that for every single person. Um, we're obviously gonna make sure people are, you know, tables are six feet apart. Um, we have the whole outdoor space to use so that people can be outdoors. Um, we actually hired dueling pianos, so we're not gonna have a dance floor. We're just, it's just gonna be kind of a fun entertainment rather than dancing. Um, I mean, we've really tried everything that we could. We did read through those same restrictions that you did, Jim, to make sure that we were complying because um, obviously we don't want the site to have anything um, just because you know we're holding the wedding there. Um, so we've definitely, you know, we're using all disposable cups because that's what you have to do. All you know, disposable silverware, um, plates, everything. Um, we were hiring a bartender um, that is licensed and insured. Um, so we've really tried to think of everything to make sure the site is secure and that we are as well. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I when I saw the request for alcohol, 
and you know given covid you know personally i'm i i'm not in favor of granting the request for um the alcoholic beverages um i'm, I'm just concerned about that to be quite honest so you know I'm so happy you're getting married, you know, and that's all such a great thing. And I'm, I wish it was under better circumstances. Um, I just don't think that alcoholic beverages are, are the right mix at this time. But, you know, my personal opinion, other members of the commission, Marilyn. The original request that you talk about people who are going to stay overnight, because I would have some issue with that, unfortunately. Has that been removed? Um, we were requesting, obviously we don't, if you are serving alcohol, we don't want people to be driving home. We feel like that would be more unsafe. Um, we were going to have people set up their own individual tents, which would be obviously shared just with their own partners. It's not, um, you know, shared among other groups or anything. It would just be tents on the baseball field. But if there was no alcohol, there would be no need for anybody to sleep overnight. Well, if there's no alcohol, then we probably will have to find a different venue for the wedding. So, so that is a problem with us. I right. would want to have um, our board of health uh, take a look at all this because what we're so hearing is also is also very different from what we have in the um, plan here on the the memo. You know, the memo says 85 people at the event, but uh, Rachel. Well, that Mark was written standing. before the governor changed there. You know, so obviously I can write a new memo the new, with our. The new Yep, the new rules just went into effect yesterday, literally. Right, exactly. Um, so obviously well, that was when we were allowed to have a hundred, you know. So right. was, and right. there's more in the uh, more in that plan on those executive orders than I can understand easily in terms of uh, the number of cleanings and in terms of food service and how everything has to be taken care of when food is prepared and served. Um, I, I would really want to have somebody from the the board of health take a look at whatever the plan is. I know it's updated from what we have in front of us right now, but something written that explains what's going to be done and then have them take a look at it and see if it meets it. Because I, I think there's going to be some really severe limitations imposed by those uh, executive orders. And I just don't think us as the uh, owners of the property or the managers of the property are going to be able to um, up, uphold the, the details. And I don't know if uh, Mark and Rachel are either. Margaret. Right. Um, Jim, I think <clears throat> I really like your idea about getting the Board of Health to, to look at this because with a lot of these things related to COVID, you know, they are they are kind of taking the lead on this. Um, Rachel, one of the things I would ask, because I think the Board of Health may, may want to know this as well, is with the guests that you have coming, do you have people who would be coming from states where currently they are Today, they would be asked to quarantine for 14 days, and that may potentially also be in place on September 19th. Um, so we do not. Everyone is from Massachusetts, okay. New Hampshire. Okay, thank you. I just, you know, that was that was one more data point that would, would come up in the conversations, and I just figured I'd ask. So thank yep. you. Yep. Marilyn. So I'm, I'm all for having Jeff make a uh, a look at this and make sure that everything could be done or not done and get a ruling from him because he definitely sets the tone for Westford. I don't think that's something we're able to do for ourselves. Um, so, can I just ask, yeah. Rachel, have you had any communication with the Board of Health at all? I've been in touch I with um, Michelle Collette just to do the bookings, but um, have you spoken with the Board of Health at all about anything else, the caterer or anything? Nope, I have not. I was not made aware that that would be necessary. Okay, so I think I, if you want, I can email you the contact to the um, health department, and I would definitely include, um, you know, as much of the proposed wedding activities that you've been discussing tonight and, and what you had been contemplating. and and also those protocols that you were yourselves going to put in place. Um, I th I'm not sure, what, you know, we did mention the bathhouse um, that I think you, you didn't mention as much about what you might be doing for that, but you should certainly think about that. And I, I think, you know, what 
I'm hearing from everyone on the commission is is whether or not that's really going to satisfy the executive orders that we as the land managers are going to be able to monitor and make sure that's all taking place. So that even with the health department's review of what they're doing, you need to think about that aspect, you know, whether you're meeting that requirement. And, and as you know, our-, uh, our That's fine, we can um, definitely- Well, I was just gonna say, as the commission knows, we, our facility manager um, really is not there um, only, you know, just to help if there's a problem on the property or to, you know, um, make sure they check in and they check out and that they're keeping to the, the quiet times and stuff like that, so. And he wouldn't be there to know. monitor that everyone's doing things properly. So I don't have a problem working with the Board of Health. Um, I guess my question is, is if I do get approved from the Board of Health, um, you know, obviously we were told that we need to ask the commission to be able to serve alcohol. So if we got approval, would that be allowed? Or are you just, you know, more leaning towards not allowing that either way? I guess. I can't hear you. You're What's the commission think about the alcohol? I'm not in favor, but you know, what are the other commission members saying? I, well, I, I just think that even that should be discussed with Jeff uh, in terms of whether it's serving one or two glasses at a table, but not people who can go and get their own refills all night long. I think specifications need to be put out and we can see if we can live with that. Uh, the other thing is I would want a letter from Jeff as well, giving us permission to rent out the property under these particular conditions before we took action. And this is not to make it difficult for the bride and groom, because my heart actually hurts for uh, so, But it is to see whether we can make it work, but under what kind of conditions where we can always justify where we did it because we were here for guidance and this was what we were allowed to do, so. Jim? I really don't want Westford to become one of the uh, the towns that the governor mentions on his daily COVID briefing as a hot spot, a new hot spot. I really do not. And re reading and reading through those um, um, executive orders, there are dozens and dozens of details with regard to uh, cleaning and sanitization and all that we don't have anything like that going on at our property. The the bathhouse is not to that level of uh, cleanliness, and it, it's never going to be. The uh, food service, I don't know how the food's gonna work. You indicated that people would be bringing food in. I don't know how that works. I, I, I just, I don't think we're gonna be uh, renting the, the property out um, for the remainder of the, the season or for the foreseeable future. I think we ha we're gonna have to um, uh, at least temporarily suspend any uh, any rental license licensing until, until we get better clarification or these, uh, these rules are relaxed significantly. I, I just don't see it, it, it happening. So we're hiring professional servers and cleaners. We're not self-serving. We're not bringing our own food. We're also having catered food brought in. It's not like each uh, parent's making a dish or something. It's not a potluck. All right. What, what, whatever is actually planned, we have to get that in writing. And then that's what we got to go over with the Board of Health. Well, it's possible it could work, but reading those executive orders, I have my doubts. So I guess we just want to know, I mean, if we can comply with all the Board of Health issues, can we then get, you know, the okay for the alcohol? I mean, because otherwise, if you're just not going to let us have alcohol, regardless how many hoops we jump through, then we have to probably just start looking. I mean, obviously, we already sent out the invitations. We're going to have to send out updates if we have to find a new location and obviously getting a new location is not going to be easy to short a notice i understand so i guess i'm just asking if we can jump through you know go through all the steps that the board of health wants will you then allow us to have the alcohol i'm personally not in favor so I would, I'm just one commission member, but I'm saying I wouldn't be in favor of the request to shove alcohol. I'm not, I'm not in favor either. I've been sitting in front of my television at the evening news, yelling at the people in California, having the big packed beach party, yelling at the people in, uh, in New Jersey and New York that are having the COVID party. Um, 
looking at the beaches where there's one out of a hundred people wearing a mask, but they're all packed, packed like sardines. I don't want to be one of those towns. I don't want to be a, a lifeguard meeting or a, a football camp person or a graduation party like Westford's already had. I, I, I don't want that to happen to us. I agree with Jim. Um, I think that even if the Board of Health is involved and every precaution is taken, that once alcohol is involved, inhibitions are kind of out the window and there's no regulating at that point. So I wouldn't be in favor of either, unfortunately. And I'm sorry, my heart goes out to you guys, but I just don't, I, I just can't consciously be okay with that. Marilyn? My agreement too, I can't agree on the alcohol. And again, I feel really badly even as I say it, uh, but uh, I don't think we could afford that liability. Well, then we already have four of the six commission members not in favor of the request to serve alcohol at EBC. So I'm thinking, you know, we shouldn't be sending these folks to go see, you know, the Board of Health if ultimately we're not going to be allowing them to serve alcohol. And maybe we should be telling them that now. And maybe okay. they need to be right. on. Thank and, you. And, 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 and I'm terribly sorry to have to say that. Hey. I think to prevent this sort of a, a situation in the near future, we ought to suspend all uh, licensing, leasing for events like this um, and let REC know about that until such time as there's significant changes in the, uh, uh, the governor's orders and it, it makes it reasonable to proceed. But I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't want to continue with this rental property issue for a while. Marilyn? I agree, and I think it should be on the website. I think we should have a notice out there so anybody who would come in would see that. Any commissioners not in agreement with that approach? Seems like it's unanimous, Carol. Okay, I'll um, let Michelle Collette know and we will get um, information out also on the um, website. Yeah, and I think to, to just tack on to what Jim said, you know, is, is if somebody's hosting an event um i i don't know how realistic it is for them for us to then say and they have to monitor and manage the behavior of all those guests i think that's you know that i i think that's just not going to be workable um in the current environment you know the, they, yeah Okay, I will let her know. We we did have um, events, um, some groups have canceled on their own, but we did have some other groups that were looking to come in, even a couple of Cub Scout groups that were probably, you know, not sure yet whether to continue going forward, but we will, um, we'll just make that change so people don't have to, you know, make the last minute change. Thank you. Okay. I'm okay. really sorry, folks, that so, we couldn't accommodate your requests. I really am. I, I hear that you're not granting us a liquor license, but are you now also saying you're not even going to let us host the wedding there, even if there isn't liquor? But they said they didn't want it if they couldn't have. No, liquor. you said you didn't want the venue if we could if you couldn't serve liquor. I, I don't want it, but I may not have a choice in that. Okay. Well, you see, okay. The invitations okay. have been sent out. We have spent thousands of dollars already for this. Ten thousand. Yeah. Um okay. and. You know, obviously, liquor, we would love to, you know, obviously offer it, but, I mean, it's not the do-all, end-all, and the last thing we want to end up with is not a place at all. We'd hate to have that happen to you as well. Marilyn? Okay, then then I have another suggestion as well. I think they should go through the piece we suggested with the Board of Health, but I think it's possible also for us not to have the bathhouse open because it has, what, 19 you know, or some uh, large number of bathrooms inside it, uh, but perhaps rent a porta potty where we have more control, or they have more control over one or two places. Well, I guess you should. That's, you up, should to the board of that's up to the Board of Health, too. Yeah. You know, but that, that you mentioned that, that's all. So, Carol, do you. Do you we're going to have these folks go and talk to the Board of Health. It seems like we've decided 
alcohol is, is not going to be an option for this event. Um, and then we'll hear what the planning board or, or the Board of Health has to say about any additional um, requirements that they might have. Okay, so I guess to, my question, before go, sorry. Before we go to the board, we got to get something in writing detailing exactly what they are planning. For the board. Right, and my question was going to be for other events that haven't canceled um, yet, should we be asking, you know, it sounds like we should be asking them to put together their um, protocol as well. I just don't know, you know, um, what the health department's level of, um, I don't know, if they can get back that quickly on people's things. They, they're probably going to need a time frame before they can act as well. Um, so I'll, I'll check in with them tomorrow and see what is reasonable, but it, I guess I will probably need some further guidance if what you're saying is the other events you don't want to have held there regardless, or do you want to let, if the health department thinks that they can work through programs with them, you know, they, they would, you would keep it open. I mean, I'd like to accommodate the request that we currently have if the Board of Health thinks that, um, you know, it can be done in, in a safe and effective manner. Okay. And nothing else. Okay, so Rachel and Mark, I think you just need to get your um, your proposal together as quickly as you can so that we can share it with the health department and give them the time they need to review it. And, and again, just knowing things could change again, could go up or down or <laughs> either way. All right. I guess, um, so who do we contact with all this? Well, you should probably send it to me um, and I will um, forward it to the health department and copy you. Okay, I have your email because we were in yeah. contact. So. Right, and you might as well copy Michelle or I can send it to her as well, just so she's on the loop and is, is knowing, you know, what is being discussed. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our uh, next discussion item, which is a um, concern with a possible conservation restriction intrusion at five Callista Terrace. Okay. Now, this is the pool issue, right? Correct. Carol? And yes. I thought this is the above ground pool, and I thought that the uh, the remedy to this was that, um, you know, we were going to leave the pool in place for this year. And then, you know, the pool was going to be moved at the end of the season um, for the next year. And there would no longer be this issue about whether or not there's been an intrusion into the uh, to the CR. That's how you, we had left it. And then you had a request from Bill Harmon that it be discussed again at a meeting and we postponed it till tonight. Um, do any other commission members have any issues with um, what had been discussed and what I just discussed? No. No. I, I think Mr. Feldstein, uh, uh, Feld, Feldstein, had already mentioned that he believes that as a result of the filling process, the, the pool probably did move slightly over a line and he's gonna remove it at the end of the season anyway. So if we give him some time, like two to four weeks, bingo, we're already talking mid-September, which is past the time he indicated he'd be taking it down anyway. And then as long yeah. as next year it goes up well on his property, I think we're good. I, I agree. Think so. I agree, and I think that's enough discussion as well. I think so. Any other commission members see it any differently? So I would just add that I've also agreed um, to try to look at the trail issues when all the vegetation has died back and we can um, try to make sure that we have a, a, a useful trail that goes through that open space. Okay. Mr. Chair, there's a hand raise if you're taking comments okay. from the public. Certainly. Uh, hello, hello, my name is Joe Devlin. Can you hear me? Yes. Ken? Yes, um, I'm the trail steward for the area in, um, uh, and I, I've seen this trail and this trail is in a um, really inconvenient place 
And it sort of, you know, even if it didn't go through the pool right now, I was wondering if I could use this time, you know, it's nice that you're granting um, uh, Mr. Feldeisen the um, ability to move this in a timely fashion, but to propose a new trail path. This just That's sort nice. of runs pretty much right through the backyard. And I'm wondering if I could, you know, um, seek out over the late summer and fall some of the people in the area and make a proposal of a trail that would permanently connect the uh, town woods and orchard area down through the path behind Callista in a way that will work for the long term. It's really been a, you know, a poor trail placement from day one. And I'm just wondering if, you know, I, could I work on a solution to this? Because even if it even if they move the pool, the, the, the trail practically goes through the open part of the backyard right now. And, you know, nobody really likes that. It only makes sense. So there's got to be an issue with it. So what um, do you mean? I, can I just say, I guess I would just want you to make sure that you work with the homeowners association and um, and uh, also with Sean and his wife, you know, where in particular, you know, it, it's visible from their yard and they have expressed to me that they've had people who have walked into the yard not knowing where they were going exactly sure so. because the trail is it, it's almost in, it, it appears as the trail just ends right into um the feldeisen's backyard it, it, it's very confusing at the moment so you know yeah so i think just please keep me in the loop as well yeah I, i'd like to use the time and... over the fall as the trails open yeah. to propose something different and work with your office to come up with a proposal for the spring I think moving that's the trails what we're going to do. Anyone have any issues with that? Nope. Makes sense. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything further to discuss on on you know this uh, discussion item? I think we're all good. Um, Sean, are you okay with this? You're muted. Can we unmute Sean? He looks to be unmuted. I can't hear him. I can't hear a thing. Yeah, he. I wonder if it's his microphone or. How about now? A oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Good. Sorry, the, the meeting's going so long, my headset is dying. Um, um, so thank you, I guess, to all of you guys for hanging in there on another uh, another long session. The pool is only ever meant to be temporary. It's a temporary soft-sided pool. Uh, it was just for the COVID summer to still try to be able to let our kids have a good time, given all the you know the vacations we have to cancel. So there is still space for the trail that goes through there. It did slide as we were uh, filling it with the tanker truck because I wasn't going to dry the well. Uh, and um, and the gentleman was kind enough to, to adjust it, but when he did, he adjusted the frame because you can't slide the liner once it's got in it, and, and that's how it sort of slid over there by a little bit. So the intent wasn't to be there. The, the intent was always that it was coming down, so I appreciate uh, the, um, the forgiveness on that. Um, and then if I can just say hi to my mom, because I finally made it on TV, and I just thought that would say, <laughs> Hi. That's it. And I'm in favor of moving the trail because people keep walking into our backyard, our kids are playing, it it, it scares them. And uh nobody really enjoys walking through that trail anyways because of uh our neighbors' dogs that get out and attack people. So if it okay. can be it could be a more enjoyable experience for people in the town and it'll probably get used more as well. Thank you for for, for being so accommodating. Thank you. <laughs> Um, anything else that the commissioners want to bring up in regards to this uh, discussion item? If not, can we move on to our next? Yes, I hope so. Okay. Sean, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. You as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we need to discuss anything, Carol, in regards to the Hartford Road open space development? So yeah, I had just put this on for you if you wanted to give any feedback to the planning board um, while they were in the early stages of their public hearing. It is going to require filing um, as it's proposed right now because they're expanding the um, existing driveway to a road. 
and I haven't really looked at the location of the replication area, but if you looked on the plans, um, you know, it, it, it may meet the requirements of, um, you know, going on a linear area along the edge of the wetland, but it's also in the middle of the woods. They don't show how they're getting there. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of disturbance to create that um, replication area. And anyway, just it was really mostly an opportunity for you if you had any for anything you wanted to share early on. I mean, my first observation when looking at the plan, it looked like there were some um, fairly decent sized open space areas. Yeah, they, the planning board has already said that they're they want to see an open space development there, so they are working on that back okay. at that level. So you, you like the open space area, so that's good. Yeah, um, I guess if any of the commission members have any comments in regards to the uh, project, could you send them along to Carol? Yep. yep. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, so how about some certificates of compliance? I see two we have for, uh, looks like two for 25 Forge Village Road. Right, so there um, had been an order of conditions that had expired and then a new filing. And so this is actually for Nicole's Way. It's a private road where they've developed houses off of it. Um, there's um, a rain garden that goes into a detention basin. Uh, there was, you know, associated with some of the lots, there was um, buffer zone work and they've received certificates of compliance on um, most of those at this stage. And now we're just seeking to close out the road. Um, I know that the planning board is working with them and is holding an escrow um, to make sure that the all the um that they're satisfied with all the drainage and compliance um but at this stage i think from our end everything's stabilized it seems to be functioning there had been a problem with the rain garden for quite a long time but they've made some repairs to that and it seems to be working although we haven't had a lot of rain really since then but it, it has dried out um considerably from what it had been so anyway i would recommend the certificate of compliance at this stage Okay, can I have a motion then to uh, issue certificate of compliance for uh, Nicole's Way at 25 Forge Village Road, DEP file numbers 334-1674 and 334-1569? Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Uh, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Yeah. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Well, I yes. think I think Noel may have to abstain. Still, I don't know oh, if she knows yeah, the project. Well, well, I have to ask, so you yeah, know, she know. just uh, saying, and uh, I'm in favor. Okay. Okay. So the next is uh, certificate of compliance is for Crimmins at 13 Weedamu Way. Right. So this was. Um, you know, if you, if you remember Weedamu Way, if those of you are familiar with it, on the right-hand side, there were several house lots that had some buffer zone work, and then they came back um, with a subsequent filing when they actually had a buyer for the property and they wanted to do some hardscaping in the back, which included some decks and um, patio area. And if there had been an area that they wanted to be able to do like a place set area, like a playground, you know, swing set kind of spot. And the commission approved everything but that. So we, Matt and I did a site visit yesterday and everything seems to be in substantial in compliance. They did lay out the patio a little bit differently than had been originally shown instead of it being squared off, it's rounded off. And um, in the down in the corner um, of the photographs that we took yesterday is that area that is net left was left naturalized, and then the other um, the stone wall kind of acts as it's not a defined really you know landscape wall but just it was the defined edge of the limit of disturbance and kind of hidden in the ferns you can see that the posts are in place and that you know obviously they've been keeping a natural area between the posts even in their their landscape yard so. I would recommend certificate of compliance for both 
their original order 1410 and the amended uh, the new order 1680 for that additional work. Okay, can I have a motion then to issue a certificate of compliance for, oh, sorry, uh, Margaret. Well, I was, you know, going back to Nicole's way is, does the Mullins rule actually apply to certificates of compliance? Because they can be from so long ago that many commission members were not you know, on the commission when the project was originally um, approved. I think it's just public hearings, but. Okay, yeah. so, so for, ish, for certificates of compliance, Noel can vote. Yes. Okay. I, if, I guess you're right. If she knows enough tonight that she's comfortable with it. Yeah, the, the, in hearing your summary, if she feels comfortable, she can yeah, vote. I think you're right. So, so yeah. to go back to Nicole's way, do you want to vote on that one, Noel? No, I'm going to abstain on that. There you go. Um, so again, can I have a motion to approve the certificates of compliance for 13 Woodymoo Way, DEP file number 334-1410 and DEP file number 334-1680? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Abstain. Okay. And Eric, yes. Okay. Uh, the next certificate of compliance is for Codwell at 112 uh, Keys Road. So we also did a site visit there um, yesterday. I think Jim or Bruce or other might be on here. Yeah. Um, if Bruce, if you want to also unmute, unmute your microphone. This project came in well before the time I've been working here. I think it was 2002 or something like that. So it was a little confusing to me initially with the plans that he'd submitted for, with his request for certificate of compliance. I did get a better sense of things yesterday in the field, but I think um, Bruce might want to give you kind of his take on what they did and what they didn't do and how it all came together. Um, good evening. Uh, it, this is a long time ago. I think it was uh, first uh, started in 1999. Uh, I came before the commission to uh, do stonework along Keys Road, uh, excuse me, uh, Keys Pond. Uh, the uh, the uh, mortar and the stone was falling in. Um, <clears throat> that work was not done. So the, well, we, we did a major renovation on the house and the order of conditions that was issued for that was amended. Uh, hence it's 1006A. Uh, to accommodate a pretty major extensive uh, renovation of the home uh, with with uh, hay bales and silt fence, et cetera, and dry wells. All that work was done per, or, per the order. Um, some of the existing work that we had talked about, such as removing a, a chain link fence along the pond, was done uh, per the instructions in the order of conditions. But we did not get the um, certificate of compliance, mostly through miscommunication with the builder, I think. I thought that was something he would do, but uh, we were supposed to do it. So um, <clears throat> it's been a long time. So it's time to come back and talk to you guys, I guess. Okay. You know, one of the questions I asked Kara was, you know, um, at the time that we issued the original order of conditions, um, you know, I'm trying to think of how many bedrooms was in the proposed was in the proposal for the home at the time. Um, the, the, the septic is uh, sized for six bedrooms. There's currently uh, three bedrooms in the main house and an ADU with one bedroom. Um, the only reason, the reason I, I say that is because, you know, you say it's sized for six bedrooms. It's my understanding that um, the leaching field to the septic um, is within a hundred foot buffer zone. So it was meeting maximum feasible compliance at the time. So you say the septic is sized for six bedrooms. Um, I'm wondering what it was supposed to be sized at in accordance with the plans we looked at when we approved the orders of condition, because I can never, you know, I've been on the commission since 93 or 94. I can never remember having a leaching field size for six bedrooms in a hundred feet you know, within the buffer zone to a resource area, um, which would have been meeting maximum feasible, feasible compliance. 
So that's one. That's the major concern I have right now with this. Well, I, I, I'm just kind of reiterating what Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know exactly. Peter Parent did the design um, a long time ago, and the drawing says six bedrooms. I I don't know exactly. How many bedrooms uh, do you have? You say you have four bedrooms on the property, though, right now. That's what your your building says you have. The that's correct. That has not changed. From before the building. I just don't understand how we would have allowed a six bedroom septic to be built when you only have a four bedroom home. I think the uh, the engineer Peter Parent was uh over engineered it uh, i don't exactly remember why uh i think we thought it was possible to make it bigger and we said why not you know uh it seemed like it might last longer and be but that would have no been in compliance with our order of conditions because we wouldn't have had you size the septic any larger than what would have been required for the home because you were only meet because you could only meet maximum feasible compliance and right now, um, Westford doesn't allow any portion of the septic or leaching field to be built within 100 feet of a wetland. And your leaching field is within 100 feet. So that's my that's my concern. I think I, I can only speak to what the drawing said. And they, the drawing specifies six bedroom. The Board of Health has that on file. I, I don't know what to say. I just, that's what it is. Um, how? Yeah. But it wouldn't be in compliance with it may not be in compliance with our order of conditions to you. And you're and you're seeking a certificate of compliance to our order of conditions. I don't think the number of bedrooms is specified on the order of conditions. I can look. All right. The um the plan that was submitted with the application shows existing six bedroom house. I don't know anything about the leaching field or the um, septic system, whether that was part of the application. I mean, can we go back and look in the records and see what was submitted that we're supposed to be, you know, approving an order of conditions for and not what currently is built? Well, that's what I'm saying is that the plan shows an existing, existing six bedroom house on the plan that was approved in the order. So perhaps that's the house that was originally before the renovation. There were rooms that probably could have been construed as bedrooms, uh, probably per the architect's plans. I, I'm just conjecturing. Um, we didn't need six bedrooms, but that was probably what was there beforehand, and that would maybe was, was approved because the septic was done before this renovation was done. So the existing six bedroom, there was an emergency septic done prior to this. Uh, order of conditions being issued. There's an emergency one, and I think that 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 would be before this 1999 order of conditions. I'm hearing what's being said, Carl. I'm still a little confused. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. How. I don't think that the septic system was part of the order of conditions, and it sounds like what Bruce is saying is that. The septic system predates the renovation. So the septic and, system is kind of a moot point on this because there was no there's no excavation done on site. That. I'm sorry, Eric. I, I'm just confused. And the, you know, it, it seemed like was the commission part of the process for for in the installation of that septic system? Did we grant an approval for that? Because you're within a foot of a jurisdictional wetland, and if you were putting in a septic, it would have needed to have gotten the commission's approval. So I'm just wondering if it got that. Well, we certainly have it filed and, and recorded with the, um, you know, the plan, the as built recorded. I think we did everything. Uh, it was an emergency thing with the Board of Health. It was failing. We had it re-engineered and redone. I'm guessing in 1993, I don't know, I'm guessing. guessing. I'm guessing though, I, I don't know. So if there was an emergency septic repair and it was maximum feasible compliance because of intrusion into the buffer zone, at that time would the commission have had, would the commission, 
would there have been an after the fact filing that the commission would would have approved and we would also need a certificate of compliance for that filing i don't know I well, do you, um, Bruce, did I had brought this to your attention that your order conditions never had a certificate of compliance because it came up to my attention when you were um, applying to the zoning board for the ADU. But I don't, I haven't looked, Margaret, to see if there was a prior filing after the fact or otherwise or part of an emergency. Okay. I guess they like two separate to items. Our understanding before we, you know, issued a certificate of compliance. Well, let me let me just be clear on, on what we're talking about here. If the if there was an existing bedroom, uh, six bedroom house here, and this order of conditions was issued that it had nothing to do with the septic, then aren't there two separate issues? There may be an open issue maybe with the with the septic. That okay, but isn't this acceptable to say that this? Order of conditions for this renovation project is is complete. What what more information does the board need? Uh, and and Eric, my thoughts are what we've been doing with sites that have multiple orders of conditions out is we want to clear them all. We don't want to. We want to make sure that all outstanding orders of conditions get certificates of compliance for a site so that we're not dealing with one and potentially leaving another one hanging to be an issue in the future so i think we we want to make sure that if there was an older one that also needs to be dealt with we dealt with we deal with them all together or if even if we were supposed to have a sign uh, i i just so i don't know if you were even part of the process of the installation of that septic well, I can research it um, when I'm in the office tomorrow and try to give you some further feedback on that. I guess I would say from the site visit that we did yesterday, um, the only deviations that I really saw were there may have been a small patio on the side of the building that I didn't see on the original plan. And then there was a landing before a dock um, that I didn't really see clearly on the other plan, but I don't know that how much work was done to it. It sounded like it was just stone dusted and kind of made, um, I know you said, Bruce, that they put in stone dust, but I don't remember if you said anything more about just compacted it, I guess. Yeah, that's correct. Clear, it was on the plan. A lot of the stuff was overgrown at the beginning and I, don't think it was part of the plan, but there was existing stone at the time. Um, and Margaret and Eric, I think you guys walked it 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah, we were here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. still here. I'm still yeah. on the slice of property, so I, I I know the property. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is have Carol do a little more research, come back at our next meeting, and if our answers are satisfied, we should be able to issue the certificate of compliance. Okay. Um, well, Carol, I would just put this again on at our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, Matt will probably be giving you the report, but I can help, um, okay. you know, I'll do the research with him. That's fine. Um, anything else, folks? In it. Uh, we'll we'll get get a minute. Where the cobwebs were all set. Oh, okay, yeah. So you guys okay, all thank you. got a moment? I guess we are. Uh, Mr. Chair, there yes. was an abutter to the Hartford Road um, proposed subdivision. I didn't know if you were taking public comments for that or no not at the moment okay um minutes yep the minutes for july 8th 2020. any change to the comments the meeting minutes nope nope look good to me look good 
Motion then to approve the meeting minutes for July 8th, 2020. So moved. Second. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Ian? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noelle abstains. Um, I'm in favor. Okay, minutes pass. Um, any second? Sarah, you'll send it. We're going to have the three cursey circle one. You just send us a date date and time and I'll probably be there. I'm yes. not doing much else. Right. And can I also ask, can you guys come in tomorrow to sign these things that you voted on? What 115? Time? What time? 115, okay. Yeah, 115. We'll get Works. Margaret done first. <laughs> okay. Works. Great. And Carol, um, if you can stay too, I'll see if I can come to Kersey because I could walk that. Okay, yeah. I'll you give you that? a little bit on that. I can. Okay. Oh. No, Noel, did you get get that tomorrow? Uh, because we have to sign all of these orders and uh, things. We're, we're going to meet at the town hall at one fifteen, out right outside behind the back door. And Carol, will come out and we'll sign them all. We hang out at the table. Okay. Noel, with your mask. Okay. Yes. Right. Bring, yeah. Bring a pen and wear a mask. Yep. Well, actually, well, if she's in the I don't know that she has to sign them. Right. What'd you say? Is that if she abstains, she doesn't need to come in to sign them. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> thing. Unless you want um, to just visit, but you know. Nothing to return. So moved. Second. Um, Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Ann? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noelle? And her. Thanks, folks. Have Thank a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank good night. You. Have a good night. Thanks, Matt. All of them. Stay See you cool. tomorrow, folks. Yes. Noel. And her. Thanks, folks. Have Thank a good you. night, everybody. Good night. Thank good you. night. Have a good night. Thanks, Matt. All of them. Stay See you cool. tomorrow, folks. Yes. Noel.